Welcome to DAX Machina. Join us as we explore the mysteries of this world. Cryptids, monsters, macabre tales, and horror stories abound. Could they be true? Are monsters real? Good evening, folks, and thank you guys for joining us for another edition of DAX Machina. Welcome to the DAX Machina Nation. We're glad to have you guys with us tonight. We are going to have an awesome time tonight. Joining me tonight is my brother from another mother, Robbie Rains. Anthony might be joining us in a little bit. He was uh, a little busy taking care of some personal business. Doc won't be here tonight because he's with family, and Steve had to work, unfortunately. So tonight joining us in the studio is Ryan Paul Tremblay, amazingly talented artist and one hell of a cryptozoologist, and we're going to be bringing you some awesome stuff about the Genosqua. Ryan, how you doing, brother? Yeah. I'm doing pretty good. Hey, guys, doing tonight, man? So far, so good, but it's early. <laughs> <laughs> Subject to change, I guess. What could happen in the next two hours? <laughs> Let's hope not. Fingers crossed. No kidding. <laughs> um, We've been known to go off the rails a time or two. Yeah, we, we do tend to, tend to get off the rails once in a while. Um, That's the best way to go about it, man. Absolutely. You know, the... Uh, mm -hmm. That that Bigfoot that model you made could very well pass for a Genosqua. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, that's kind of what I'm loving that. This was oh. always on my mind. So as I was working on that, I'm like, hey. Well, um, since you are, uh, yeah, sure, show it to him. show it to everybody if you want. All right. You want to? All right. Well, since we're, we're getting a little bit of lag with you, right? Here we go, guys. Are you? Yeah, getting just a little bit there of lag on the audio. That is badass. Hmm. You see what's going on here? That. Yeah. Yep. What's going on that here is, with the lag, though? That is freaking mm. awesome. Any better? Is it better now? Uh, I think so. Any better, or? I think it's a little better. Okay. I think we're good. Alrighty. Well, there we go. Okay. Well, you know, sweet. The more you dig into cryptids, the more you find more and more obscure things, especially references from Native American culture. And heck, a couple of years ago, I'd never even heard of the Genosqua. Oh, yeah. Uh, how about uh, you tell our audience tonight? You know, don't you tell everybody what what the Genosqua is? Well, the Gen Genosqua is what a lot of people believe is a subspecies of Bigfoot. But unlike Patty, these guys are the guys that will chase you down with the intention of eating you. So all those friendly stories that you hear of Bigfoot cohabit gifting you, Genosqua don't do that. The Genosqua are the big bads. They're the villains of the Bigfoot world. They hunt brave in Canada while they were out hunting. Genosqua would be hunting them. And then later on, who were coming down from the mountain and were taking the women and the children and the men and basically cannibalizing them. Yeah, they'd eat a lot of them just right on the spot, and the others that they were going to save for later, they would just twist their head off. Kind of like taking mm -hmm. the lid off a soda bottle. Just... Right. That was a very... Uh... <laughs> yeah, it's one way to put it. A very common way that they used to kill people by twisting the heads right off or by lifting their from their their bottom the upper half from the lower half they would actually tear them in half. Mm -hmm. so it's, well, it's uh, brutal another name it's for very them brutal oh yeah they're very very brutal another name for them were stone giants and i think it was kind of interesting how they got that name uh because yes. this well, this type of bigfoot was was well, definitely more so, yeah. on the ball when it comes to being aggressive do what mm -hmm. what'd you say right mm -hmm. That's what it means. Genosqua means stone giant in the young language. They um, mm. they would do something that no other Bigfoot has ever been reported to do. They would coat themselves with either tree sap or some sort of pitch or even mud and then roll in river rocks mm. to have these rocks embedded all over the mud and fur and stick to them. And they would, you know, stone-tipped arrows were really no match for them. Uh, but it, it kind of uh, kind of became a game changer once firearms were introduced to the equation. 
may explain why Genosqua aren't, aren't reported quite so much. Right. It's because great I believe a lot of the tribes hunted them to damn near extinction. Right. And it's a good thing yeah, to talk I, about it because we got Brian Dullivan in the chat. And he's the one that turned me on. So really cool that he's here. Duke, good to see you, sir. Duke, if you want to join us, send me a message and I'll shoot you a link. I, I mentioned something about last night, but I never did get a chance to get a hold of him. Yeah, going back to what you said, DA, mm. I, I read that. It'd be great uh, up here. about the uh, how they would do that with the with the fur and the river rocks. That that just that blew my mind. The think of how next level that intelligent mm -hmm. quotient is to do something like that. To make primitive armor. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hang on, I'm trying to. Do you see even if come I back and see if that says the? Uh, yeah, we're having pr some pretty bad lag issues with with your with your audio. Hey, um, that link I sent you, if uh, if you can contact, reach out to Duke and send him that link if he wants to jump in. We would love to have him. Let's see, where can I, Duke, if you're in the chat? So, is he email? I guess. Do you want yeah, me to try to leave and come back and see email. if my, my audio clears up? Okay. Yeah, maybe I ought to try that because we're getting pretty bad audio feedback on that. Well, not feedback, but All delays right. and, and popping. All right, I'll be right back. Okay. Huh. Well, like you're saying, Robbie, uh, that's one of the things I found most interesting about them is they found an adaptation to avoid yeah. being stuck with arrows. Okay, I mean, is that any better? Uh, seems like it. Okay, we'll try it out, see if that worked. Okay. Oh, we're getting the popping again. Already. Oh, no. What the heck? I don't know what's going on. That's weird. I'm not really sure. Yeah, because it's a normal one. Uh, I like use, so. Let me see. I need to send him that link. Let's send it to chat. I don't want to put it in the open chat. Oh, yeah, monsters says everyone what's up. Um, I'm not sure I'm finding him in mess my messenger. My messenger is so messed up all the time. I don't know what it is about Facebook Messenger. Okay, that Ashley suggested I restart my system. Okay, well, you we'll uh, go ahead and do that and just use the same link, and we'll just keep talking until you get back. Okay, back. And I will try to see if I can get this to All right. to Duke. Um, yeah, what I was saying, I thought one of the things I found most interesting is they found a way to make rudimentary armor against arrows, um, and that's pretty that's pretty freaking smart. But the, the cognitive ability that it takes to equate, hey, I need to do something to protect myself from this, and this reason out, hmm, if I do this and put these rocks on, get these rocks to stick on my fur, I mean, it's, you know, that's, that, that's reasoning. Yeah, that, that's definitely, that's not, that's sentient behavior. That's not right. survival. That's not eat, sleep, and make little ones. That's that's yeah. that's that's a thinking enemy. Yeah, uh, you know, and of course, if it's if it's you know these things are nine to eleven feet tall and weigh in the ballpark of eleven hundred pounds, your average Native American back in you know the pioneer days was five five and a buck twenty. There's no contest even with a bow. Yeah. Uh, Mark Maker says, where would they learn this behavior? The only real enemy would be man, and they have us totally outclassed. I don't know. I mean, it shows up in the Algonquin lore quite a bit uh, that they would they, they would do this. I mean, uh, and, and they would use either mud or like pine resin, uh, sap, or uh, even even pitch, and get this get this these rocks matted into their fur. And most most arrows would just you know most arrows were were flint tipped anyway, so there's really no chance of that penetrating. Um, but the uh, 
you know, once the uh, once the Native Americans started getting muskets and even repeating rifles, that changed because high velocity lead against stone is a whole different animal. Yeah. Um, and it's it's said that they uh, the Native Americans really went after these things uh, once once they you know, started getting a bit of the upper hand. And I can understand why. I mean, these things would come in and raid villages and basically just carry everybody off, eating most of them on the spot and you know taking the rest for later. Uh, so if, you know, if I had something that would have been coming in and stealing entire villages, I would be, you know, wanting to hunt this damn thing down and make sure it didn't come back. Yeah. It might explain why there aren't as many sightings of them today. From the, from the things that I read, it seemed like it was pretty one-sided for the most part until they started getting the muskets and the repeating rifles right. and things like that. And even then, you know, I, if this thing's 11 feet tall and a thousand pounds, I don't know that I want to go up against it with any any of the rifles I've got. Uh, hey, we got a super chat from William. William Bedard. Hey, man. He says, love your content. Little donation to keep the wheels rolling. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you very much. Thank you, William. Um, Appreciate it. Duke, shoot me a message on Facebook or an email so I can get get this get this uh, to you. Um, there he is. I'm hey, back. Hey, I think that's all right. Better. Is that any better at all? Yeah, awesome. that seems better. Word. We got it. Hey, cool. do me a favor. Cool, cool. Forward that link I sent you to Duke because I'm having trouble finding it. Oh. My messenger's not working okay. right. And I'd, I'd love to have him jump in. That would be freaking awesome. You don't want me to just drop it in the open chat or? No, no, not in open chat. I don't want to. I don't want to drop it in open chat because we're like, well, you know, we okay. might have twenty five people popping in. Well, oh, that's why you just boy, we got quite, a, quite a chat rolling already. What's that? Oh, it... yes, we do. And oh, email is sent. Awesome. Well, that that adaptation, learning to, to put, you know, use rocks to deflect stone tipped stone tipped arrows and, and even stone knives or spears is pretty brilliant. But it would also explain why the natives pretty much hunted them to damn near extinction once they got firearms. Uh, well, because they had to. Are, are, oh, yeah, they had to. It, was a, it became a survival issue. If you had a creature that was coming in and basically a group of them coming in and taking out an entire village... Yeah, I can completely mm -hmm. understand. We're like, you know what? We need to put paid to these things once and for all. But yeah. you still you still get stories coming out of northern Canada, people seeing these things. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, we thought they were completely gone. But, you know, like Duke himself, he saw Genosqua, you know, and I think it was really. Minnesota. Yeah. He had his own encounter with a Genosqua. So, you know, I mean, they're coming down from Canada. They're moving down to the States now. You know, well, really, the aggression the of yeah, yeah. Well, I both think are moving. The same thing with Gugway. So mm -hmm. years ago, Gugway were pretty much the, the northernmost U.S. states in Canada. But uh, I recently found a, a Gugway sighting out of East Texas. Oh, did you? So mm -hmm. how do these well, how do these you know compare on the aggression scale to a Gugway? Think polar bear. Yeah, yeah. I think these there's in some. Level maybe you know so is a little bit above Gugwe just by a little bit though. So he's I'd like, say well, one on one I'd go with the Genosqua. Mm -hmm. I, I think, think those the are the two tend to be a bit bigger. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Ashley says, Ryan, will you explain the difference between Genosqua and Gugwe? I can That's certainly try. Yeah. Okay. Well, with the Genosqua, we're talking giants. You know, these are the guys that mm -hmm. roll in these rocks to form. They're armor, they're armor. Whereas the Gugwe, they're the more baboon or mandrel face type Bigfoots. And they tend to be a little bit smaller than Genosqua. Genosqua are said to get like really huge. We're talking like nine, ten feet. The audio pretty bad. You know, seven, six feet. They're not huge. Is it? I'm not sure yeah, what's going on. Yeah, cutting out again. Oh, no. That's so weird. Well, hopefully it'll stop. We just recorded the other day, and you know, hopefully. Huh. Might just be a bad internet connection tonight. It does it sometimes. It could be. You know, 
I, I'm not not to, I'm not trying to sound like I'm getting my tin foil hat on, but sometimes on certain subjects we suddenly have trouble. And I, uh, not, oh yeah, I'm not saying somebody's messing with us, but could be a case somebody's messing with us. It could be. <laughs> it's definitely possible. I mean, I've, I've talked to other podcasters who said they get on certain subjects and they suddenly have connection issues. So I don't know. Take that oh, yeah. as all. Well, no, I mean, that, I've heard about it a lot. That night we were on William's show, DA. We, had, we we were fine backstage, and then as soon as we got on started talking, everybody started having problems and cutting out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had the same one. I wonder, wonder, I really wonder what causes it. And I, it, it happens with enough frequency and on certain uh, specific subjects that I, yeah. you know, I, I can't help but wonder sometimes. Maybe again, I, maybe I'm just being a little, little uh, tinfoil hatty and and a little paranoid. But you know, sometimes a little paranoia is not a bad thing. Uh, oh, Sue yeah. from Australia says says uh, other channels, DA absolutely yeah. other channels are having it as well. Yep. So it's weird, man. It's Doc ain't here. I'll say it. Thing on on satellites. Well, you were explaining the difference between uh, Genoska and Gugway. Um, now, I know that, that the uh, the uh, Genosqua have that have that rudimentary armor, but Gugway have known to be tool users. Yeah, they've known that might, that been might... To actually make traps. They actually were known mm-hmm. to set traps for graves. The Gugway were very good at digging that were meant to be traps for people passing by. And it's really interesting though, because if you look at both the Genosqua. And the Gugly, they seem like they're tied to the troll legends that the Slavic mm-hmm. people believe in, the Nordic Slavics. It, there's a lot in common with all the troll beliefs. So you got to wonder mm-hmm. if maybe well, the Junior or Gugly are some kind of troll as well. Well, if you look at the uh, epic poem of Beowulf, when they, when they started describing Grindel, um, yeah. Grindel sounds very much like a Bigfoot type creature. Then you've got the legends of uh, the Wood Woes from Northern Europe. Uh, which were basically yes. these gigantic hairy, hairy, hairy men that uh, they they said were just you know men who had gone feral in the woods. I, I think our ancestors have known right. about these things for a long time, but modern science says they can't exist. So you know we've we've tended to forget a lot of that old lore. Uh, but there were orders of knighthoods that mm-hmm. would roam the English countryside trying to put down these wood woes creatures. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean these things have actually been going like going to war with us in a way they've been attacking us and getting fended off for a long long time so it's mm-hmm. not really uncommon well and then you look at the uncanny valley theory uh when when they started doing you know psychological testing from all over the world they found that people from all walks of life from every corner of the planet all feared things that looked almost like us in the dark and i think there's a yep. reason for that i think these creatures like the gugway and the genosqua i think at some point in our history they hunted us probably about the time we were learning to make fire and learning to make tools and even up to now i mean you know, I don't think you know, with the like Patterson type Bigfoot, you don't hear a lot about them being aggressive. But you, you get these missing four one one cases in some of these remote places, and I think the Genosqua and the the uh, and the Gugway probably make up for a lot of that for one of the, the, oh, okay. the dangerous ones, the dangerous encounters. I would agree. I think that's definitely possible. I mean, you know, it would be genetic memory. I think that's what you're trying to imply. Is it's you know way back in our mm-hmm. history. Heritage. So it'd be right. genetic memory that, you know, while we were, you know, evolving, these coming after us and because our ancestors were getting hunted, kind of have memory of it. Darkwood says, I heard Gugway have three toes. How many did the Genosqua have? Well, according to reports, they have about five toes. Their, their footprints are very similar to Patty and the other one. That's why if you're in Canada and you see the five toed footprints, you always have to be very careful because you don't know if it's a normal Bigfoot. As opposed to a Genosqua, and that, and that would be the the uh, the thing the real telling thing is if you came upon uh, upon one, is it going to mm-hmm. look at you and walk away? Is it going to twist your head off and you know eat you on the spot? I would I would say honestly, if you're in Genosqua territory, then you're not, not going to know. You're there, and it. <laughs> I just saw Ashley's comment. Don't get her. Started. 
That's funny. Um, I've heard when it comes to the Gugway, I've heard both three and five toes. Ryan, you're, you're like fritzing out. Yeah, I have second. two. I have two. It's really confusing. It's very confusing. Oh, connection issues. Well, it, like, a, yeah, a little bit of connection issues. Like um, uh, the Honey Island Swamp Monster was reported to have three toes. Yeah. And do you, do you think that was maybe, you, know, uh, you think that one, that was a gug wipe instead of a regular Bigfoot? I think it's possible. I definitely think it's possible, especially the three toes. My mm -hmm. science book would make sense with three toes. It's something reptilian. Something primate with three toes doesn't make a lot of sense. What would that be? For? It wouldn't right. help with balance. So it's really good to look at the three toes. Uh, Darkwood mm -hmm. says, I had a 26-inch five-toe print. wonder if that was a Genosqua. Uh, but I would think so. I would it think you, know, you get, a, get tracks that are above 18 inches. You know, if a track's above 18 inches, that means mm -hmm. that thing's well in excess of 10 feet tall. Mm -hmm. That would be one big rascal. That link oh yeah, these things are not, they're not the kind that can just you know communicate with you. They're going to come after you because they want. Right, and, and that's one of the things I always uh, always mention about people that do gifting. Uh, there are some people who've had good results with gifting, and then there are others that that have reported bad things happening. I I think you you making a mistake by getting any dangerous animal, a big predator, to associate you with food. Uh, I think that's just a bad idea in general. And I think if if you find out, discovered you were gifting a, a Genosqua, you might go out to put an apple on the tree one day and get your head picked like an apple. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, I mean, it's no different than yeah. the way they, the, you know, in these third world countries where they clean their fish at the at the edge of the river, and next thing you know, they're crocodile lunch. I mm -hmm. mean, it's it's the same thing. You start associating yeah. yourself with food, and that's what's going to happen. Right. You know, that's why there's more shark attacks around fishing piers and the shallows where there's a lot of fishing going on. You know. Yeah, that was what they told us about uh, Cherry Grove Pier when we vacationed in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. They're like, don't swim near the pier. And I'm like, why? He's like, because the guy's catching fish up there, dump, dumping the guts in. The sharks are always near the pier. I'm like, yep. oh, okay, oh. we're going to go as far from the pier as we can. Yep. So, I mean, Nighthawk yeah. says, William Nighthawk says, I wanted to upload the po photos of three toed tracks I found. Uh, I think I still have those, William. Let me see if I can find them. Um, but, you know, three toed tracks, though, that's what throws me. I mean, you, you mentioned reptilian. Uh, of course, you've got accounts of like uh, the uh, the lizard man of Scape or Swamp. Mm. You know, could there be reptilian things out there? And I, I don't see them being able to, like, say, crossbreed with a Bigfoot. But they certainly could be competing for the same food sources. Yeah. True, and very true. That's the thing about the, uh, that lizard man. You know, Lance and I did a show on that one, and he talked that he does a lot of alligator hunting, and they got a ten foot alligator, ten foot, and I want to say he said four hundred fifty, five hundred pounds. It's not a small animal, and it was in five or six inches of water, and they never knew it was there. Something that big that can hide in that little amount of water, you know, and think about how much water is on this. I mean, what what's out there in those swamps that we don't even know about that we can't see? Right. Uh, exactly. Oh, I clicked the wrong one. Steve Padden had a question. He says, "Da, is there any way to know what type? Oh, know you tell? How, know how to tell the type of Sasquatch in and around the area in which people live?" I would say that the big telling thing would be the type of encounter reports you have from your area. Just look them up. They're easy to find online or talk to any of you people like, a, you know, anybody that's a, that's a cryptid researcher. Talk to them about the reports from the area, because if if the reports that they're getting are, below, are like hunters saying, hey, I saw one. It looked at me. It walked away. You've probably got a Patterson type. But if you've got a lot of missing people and missing hunters in your area, I would say it's the more aggressive type. Yeah. You can also look at the white killings too, though. There's a lot of like bear and things like that being killed in the yeah, negative woods. Heck. There's something very odd about that. Well, mm. uh, Jesus Payon on the Navajo reservation, they came across the, the uh, corpse of a horse that hadn't been dead very long, that it had one of its hind legs torn off. Whoa. 
wow. <laughs> That's some power right he there. He said on the Navajo oh, res that the, the type of Bigfoot they have on the Navajo res were very aggressive and had ran people out of houses. Wow. There was an area along one of the creeks that, yeah. that, that every house along that creek had been abandoned because of them, because of Bigfoot activity. He mm -hmm. said that stuff you won't find out if you don't if you don't know people on the res. They never tell you. That's true. That's true. Very true. It's amazing how you know even in this day and age where we've got the internet at our fingertips, just how many people still don't report these. I mean, for every one report, there's got to be half a dozen or more sightings that just go unreported because people don't want to be, you know, don't want everybody call them crazy. Uh, there was a time in my life I, I worried about people thinking I was nuts because I, I was into Bigfoot, uh, but I'm not a cop anymore, so now I don't care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, I'm Michael brings up a good point. The toes, I mean, that could be a project of inbreeding, and that's actually something I said before, too. That is a good point. You know, and maybe, you know, the Gugwe are so localized that, that, you know, their population is so condensed that they inbreed all the three toes are so prevalent. That could very be or very well be true. I mean, there were a few of enough of them left to reestablish a breeding population might have gotten a little inter intertwined. Right. Uh, Deacon right. Prepper says, what's the best defense generally against these things? Um, I would say Don't generally your best <laughs> defense is distance. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, because the, the the ones that don't that won't hurt you, you know, they if you spook them or you get you get too close to one of their kids, much like a bear, I'd say they could still be aggressive. And if you get close to one of the Genosco or the Gugway, uh, distance is you know distance is your best ally because these things are going to be very mm -hmm. hard to bring down, even with a large caliber a large caliber rifle. Oh, would you look at that? It's time to be somewhere else. Yeah, it's time to be start hunting somewhere else. <laughs> Yep, make this code out and picture me gone. Did you send that link to uh, Duke? Is he still in the chat? I was hoping he would pop yeah, in. Yeah, I, I sent it. Did it not go through? I don't know. He's still in the chat. I had, haven't seen him pop in yet. Duke, check your email. Uh, I had Ryan send you the, the link. Uh, Steve Penn says, inbreeding can cause things to be overly aggressive and dangerous. Exactly. Yeah, you get bad temperaments. Very uh, true. You know, just, well, look at the domestic dogs. Uh through the generations since we first domesticated wolves as humans, uh, we've bred dogs for specific traits. Some of those mm -hmm. traits were were violence. Certain breeds yeah. were bred to be violent. Um, now, you know, you, you get more modern times where we don't rely on our dogs to save our lives every day like, like they once did. A lot of that, mm -hmm. that has been bred out. But still, there are certain breeds of dogs that are bred as hunting dogs or attack dogs. Um, you, know, you get the wrong end on it, get on the wrong end of a cane corso, and that dog will tear your arm off. Mm -hmm, but yep. they're also extremely good with kids for some reason. I mean, it's really weird. <laughs> Werewolf says I'm crazy. Well, yeah, I'll believe that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you've got Gugway so and, and yeah, I would definitely agree with that. But if you've got Gugway or <laughs> Genosco in your area, your best defense is just not be in the woods with them. Yeah, just avoid them at all costs. It's not going to be fun for you. Yeah, if you're if you're hunting an area and you start seeing a lot of signs like um, trees pushed down over over trails, mm -hmm. uh, or you start finding like trees with the with, that have been ripped out and the and shoved back in the ground with a root wad in the air, those are aggressive territorial markers. Crossing yep. those is is at your own risk. You don't see that a lot with the Patterson Gimlin. You find those root wads twisted and turned upside down in areas where Sasquatch are known to be far more aggressive. They've been they find that all over in Alaska. They've reported them in Maine, and I know a couple of guys who've reported them here in Missouri in the Mark Twain National Forest. So since we're talking about yep. the aggressive ones, the Eight Canyon incident mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in Washington, we think that. Could have been Gugway or Genosco. I don't think so. I think that I don't was think just so. I a, think like a Passion Gimlin stock. Pissed off Bigfoot clan. Yeah, because yeah, they, they shot one. Patty. Yeah, that was a patty type. They were just reacting to one of their own being shot. You know, yeah, I mean, I think they just would have continued to just see them on the periphery had they not shot one. I mean, so, you know, any yeah, of them could be dangerous. They're not one of them. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like, uh, say, for example, the missing 411, the Hunters. 
Uh, and I've talked to a lot of, of, uh, of hunters myself uh, that have had sightings. But the missing 411, the hunters, always really intrigued me because these are guys who were one-armed, too familiar with the area where they were at, had hunted it for years, and vanished without a trace never to be seen. Um, now, like I said, I've taken a lot of reports, including Anthony, who's yep. usually here, in his sighting. He literally had a Bigfoot in the crosshairs of his rifle, and he didn't take the shot because he thought it looked too human. I think the missing hunters are ones that took the shot. Could be. I mean, that, that makes the most sense to me. I mean, you shoot one. Yeah, I would agree. Odds with that. are really good it's not the only one in the area. Mm hmm. That's what I say. So, I don't know. Usually, where there's one, there's more. So it's always better to be safe than sorry. Oh, yeah. I would say unless it's one that's been ousted from a clan, if you see one mm -hmm. at all, you're, there's probably six or seven nearby that you can't see. Oh, do get Link? Okay. Um, I'm not sure what's going on here. Very strange. The uh, Link didn't go through to do so. Oh. Let me... Uh, not sure where to, where to send it on. Uh... Oh, uh, one of the guys I know, Daryl Denton, he sent me a comment. He says, great show tonight. I can't comment. Don't know why. There's been Gugway spotted near the northeastern area of LBL where the river turns. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's actually something that a lot of people ignore is that Gugway are at the LBL. Not just Dogman, but Gugway. Yeah. So something to look into. Yeah, definitely something. I'm planning a trip back there very soon, so I uh, I will definitely Ooh. be looking into that. Uh, uh, just be careful. When you start dealing with Gugway, whew. Mm hmm Yep. Those things Those are very dangerous. Those are the ones I really don't want to run into in the woods. But I bet you can bet your bottom dollar I will be very well armed next time. Yeah. Let me see if I've got... You better be. <laughs> I, I don't think I've even got his email address in my in my address book. I was going to send it to him. Oh no. Um. Hi, right, here. Here's what we'll do. Hey Duke, send me an email at this email address. I'm putting it in the chat right now. That's my email. D A Roberts at D A Roberts dot net. I've got my email up. Send me an email and I'll reply with the link. I would really love to get you in on the conversation. Heck yeah, man. That's so, Sir Duke right there. Heck yeah. So what do you think, uh, with the Genosco, what do you think caused them to come up with that ad adaptation using the stones? Because even you know, as big I as they are, if, you wouldn't think a Native American era would do much damage. I still have to wonder if maybe it's because uh, they just they saw how violent people were becoming. You know, they, they were watching humans. They they saw the hunt and they figured, oh, it's a matter until they start coming after us. We better get the defenses going. And maybe they did start no squad. Maybe through, you know, watching their own kind die, they realized we got to do something to defend ourselves. And yeah, that was the most possible way. That's the only thing they had at their disposal. Yeah. Well, it's it's a smart adaptation. But then uh, you remember the movie, um, uh, it was, I cannot think for the life of me. It was the one this image came from. Was that Primeval? Primal yes, Rage. Primeval. Primal Rage. Primal Rage. Primal Rage. No, it's yeah, Primal Rage. Sorry, Primeval. Made, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. They made body armor out of bark. Yeah. Yeah. Which I using was that pretty to interesting. Hide, too. Remember? So he had a, mm -hmm. Yep. Ask he was using to hide. He'd be right if you wouldn't even see he was there. Yeah, I know that movie's fiction, so, but as yeah. far as the cryptozoology side of it, it's one of the better movies out there. You know what? It is fiction, DA, but they taught from the spiritual beliefs. The Oma, mm -hmm. they did believe, certain tribes believed that the Oma were the spirits of the chieftains that came, came back. So they took that, that in because that's a, a tribal belief for some big foot. Did, uh, did, did they come back pissed off? <laughs> because pretty much those things certainly you were friendly. Remember. Well, you got to remember these chieftains that died. These were the you know older ones from way back in the day when the settlers were first coming in. You know, so they were watching their lands get pillaged. So when they died, yeah, 
they were dying angry. Hang on, I need to respond to somebody. Okay. Well, um, there was, talking of uh, Primal Rage, there was another one, um, one where the guy is out camping with his girlfriend and his girlfriend gets taken and months or a year Bluff later Creek. he goes back out oh, in the yeah. woods. Yes. No, no, one. not Bluff Creek. This is a different one because it had Lance Heinrichs Big in at the end. Yeah, it was, yeah. The it was one, supposed to be setting up the Monster Hunter International. Yeah. Yeah, Big Legend. Yeah, Big Legend. Big too. Legend. That's it. So – what what type would you say that was? I'd say that was based on Juno Squaw. Based on how it behaved too. in that movie. It, it was, yeah, it was extreme, and it knew how to pretty much outpace and outdo the guy. So, yeah, I'd say Juno Squaw is what they were looking at when they made that movie. I I would definitely. agree. I would definitely agree, especially with as smart and as aggressive as it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it was incredible smart it just seems to know exactly what they're gonna do and you know it beat them to the punch so yeah it's you know squad well. mm-hmm. oh we got three beers hey, here today like, uh, hey. hey guys what's up i liked uh i liked that uh lance heinrichs and at the end told him he says you shot it stabbed it and set it on fire well you just pissed it off yep and you knew oh man sequel coming up and they never did there was do never- a sequel for that i don't know why no, and they had a whole... No, they set it up perfectly for a sequel. Mm-hmm. Well, that was actually supposed to yeah, be that... the start of a monster... Cryptid Monsterverse. Yep. That would have been awesome. Oh, that would I, I heard they had fantastic. at least two or three other movies in, in mind after that. Mm-hmm. Dude, so yep, the that's another Abominable one. was a toddler Genosqua. That one... That... Well, I did like Abominable, especially the final scene where you see all the eyes. The way it like unhinged its jaw was so yeah, cheesy. Bent the, bent the front, front of the guy's uh, <laughs> face off, yeah. The, there was a funny scene when he did it. I mean, they call Gugway the face eater, but the way its jaw mm-hmm. just went, uh. Mm-hmm. It would have made more sense yep. if it would have been like a Gugway snout. Yeah. That had a there was a lot of horror legends in that movie, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely was. Yep, Lance Henderson was in that, um, too. Yep, yeah. so was Lee Wallace Stone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, the mom from E.T. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. It was a pretty and, good uh, movie. I mean, the, the basic the, plot of it, I liked the, the reanimator the himself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. God, what's uh, his name? Je- he, uh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Combs. Jeffrey Combs, that's it. Jeffrey Combs, yeah, I love that guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of these, a lot of these films, they base the the creatures in there like um, like the movie exists. Uh, that was a good. One. I think yeah. that was more of a Patterson Gimlin type, uh, but like yeah, like, I think much so. like the Ape Canyon thing, they they killed its they killed its kid. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was a but it also movie, did really. the uprooted yeah. tree and slammed it down too. Hmm. Yep. That was a good movie, though. They really did a great job with that one. It was pretty good. I mean, as, as, and again, most Bigfoot movies you watch, they're just really cheesy or really schlocky. But uh, we've, given, we've been getting some good ones that are actually really, you know, well thought out. And uh, like uh, Primal Rage. Primal Rage, man. That one, again, based on Legends. But that movie was just hardcore. I love that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was actually written by a Native American movie company. So they really incorporated their strong religious beliefs into that. That's why it was so good mm-hmm. because they had interactions with Bigfoot. So they were putting all that ancestry and all the stories from the past into that movie. That's why it came out so damn good. Oh, absolutely. And when they use the native, mm-hmm. the actual Native American lore, I mean, it, it, it to me, it's more. It adds more uh, yeah. veritas to the to the to the tales. Because a lot of the lore we get, especially like on Genosco and Gugway, is coming straight from the Native American lore. Um, Western science still doesn't want to believe that they, these cryptids are out there. That's um, why I but, mm-hmm. Well, you, you know, Western science doesn't doesn't know every animal. I mean, they, we the scientists still estimate there are thousands of species out there we've never never identified. And we do find something big once in a while. I mean, just recently off the coast of Japan, they found yeah. a new species of whale. 
Um, the Billy yeah. Ape, and, uh, that's you know, the Billy Ape is to me almost the smoking gun. I mean, they it, it's it's it walks bipedally. It's a large primate. It uses tools and has been known to hunt lions. It's taken villagers. It's it's essentially a, an African Bigfoot, even though it's identified yep. as being a genetic a genetic descendant of the eastern lowland chimpanzee. It acts nothing like a chimpanzee. It acts like a freaking gugway. These things are tool users. They make war on other clans. They spend most of yep. their time bipedal, and they're very very intelligent. Yeah, I mean very very great. They call them the lion. Yeah, the lion killers. Mm -hmm. uh, AJ Congdon had a question. He said, uh, "What do you guys think of all the holiday advertising using Bigfoot this year?" It's just you know you, you can't help it. I mean, yeah, Bigfoot's a great way to get people's attention. Uh, you're gonna yeah, see I'm a lot of ads. I'm all for it. And yeah, sometimes they come up with some really good costumes, like the mess and the Sasquatch. I love I those Jack mm -hmm. commercials. I saw the one with the hair products today. Have you seen that one? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Duke. Three Beard says, Dr. Squatch is a sponsor. D &D &D &D. Heck yeah. If you know how to hook it up, yeah. man, I'll, I'll be happy to uh, reach out to him. Uh, look at to see if I missed any questions. Um, the chat's going by so fast, I'm having a hard, hard time keeping up. Um, yeah, it was like... So here, here's a question for you. And I know this is kind of the, the old old horror horror schlock, you know, monster versus monster. But pound for pound, what do you think uh, a Janoski would, would how it would fare against the Dogman? Ooh, I poor Dogman would be a really bad day. I, agree. I really do. I mean, <laughs> if it's wearing the stone armor, I'm not sure the dogman's teeth are, you know, they know where you know to put them in the right place. Yeah. And mm -hmm. they put the armor in the right places so you can't hit any vital organs. So, ooh, you poor dogman. But, 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 well, you know, the you average dogman sighting, yeah, the average dog, a big dogman, a really big dogman is in the eight to nine foot range. The average sighting seems to be right. put around six and a half to seven feet. The one I saw was about six and a half to seven feet. The average Janosko is 10 feet tall. Yeah, for all we know, those are toddlers or something. You know, we don't, we don't yeah, know. Be, so if they get bigger than that, they could just pick up a dogman like you do and, and, you know, flick them away. Or, you know, like Hulk did the Loki. <laughs> yep, pretty much. You need dog, man. Uh, let's see. John Doe says stone armor could be developed for things other than stone arrows. Yeah, it might have been developed for yeah. other planes of Bigfoot that use spears. I mean, it's not, it doesn't take much of a much of a thought process to take a it sharp could. rock and sharpen a big stick. Mm hmm. Uh, Mark yep, Napier says, well, "Why would one be wearing wouldn't be wearing rock armor now?" Uh, sightings of Janosko are pretty yeah. rare these days. Uh, the Native Americans hunted them damn near yeah, to defense. extinction. So, right. I'm I not mean, sure that you know, they would even if do, it, worked, do though, it anymore. Oh, you got a troll in your by the way. Thanks, like troll. Yeah, um, my my mods will get it. They're really good at nailing those. Um, let's see. Uh, Duke says Janosko. Janosko do not seem to wear any stone ar stone armor anymore. But Janosko are 15 to 20 feet tall and don't need it all that much. Jeez, my knees. That's a big animal. Holy big crap. Dude. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Well, those, those uh, comments disappeared, so the, the, uh, the, uh, yep. the mod got, got them. Stick them. Hey, we got a got a super chat from uh, Shane over at West Coast Dogman. Thanks, man. Appreciate it, brother. Oh, Shane, you're the boss, man. Hell yeah, Shane, you're awesome, dude. Um, hopefully Duke will send me an email here, she uh, shortly. Hopefully, I would love to get him in here. Yeah, I'd mentioned it last night, but I didn't get a get a chance to reach out to him. 
Uh, John Doe says, uh, stone and sediment armor is widely used feature throughout the animal kingdom with everything from mollusks to insects using it forms of it. Yep. Hermit crabs are the most famous, but not the best at it. Well, there's even Very been true, reports John. of, uh, Very true. there's been reports of, uh, 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 octopus using like, yep. you know, pieces of coral and stuff to defend themselves from when predators are around. Uh, world Bigfoot says I tried, hmm. uh, Send me a private chat with his email address. Okay. Just send it to me on Facebook. Send me his email address and I'll send it straight to him. Northwood says, if something 20 feet tall was standing still, you could walk right by it in the woods and not know if you weren't looking up. Yeah, its legs would look like tree trunks. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, if it was sitting still, and same thing, I've uh -huh. mentioned this before. Every okay. deer I've ever shot, okay, no problem. Every deer I've ever gotten, uh, I saw because it moved, and that's not any any special, you know, special adaptation of mm -hmm. the deer. It just blends in well on its own if it's not moving. Very true. Really slow, DA. I'm sorry. Oh, no problem. No problem at all. Not your fault, man. Like I said, it seems to happen when we talk about certain subjects. Not sure why. Yeah. Oh, who knows? I think they're like, no, you guys can't be talking about this. No, no, no. no. Nope. You're not allowed. <laughs> uh, Three Beard says <laughs> like a good point. Says I, you, I think you'd hear the breathing from a 20 foot creature. Maybe, you know, unless it was being quiet. I mean, you know, yeah, but we're pretty big if animals, and we can control our breathing. Yeah, if they're hunters, they know how to really tone down their breathing so you don't hear them huffing and puffing. Yeah. Or if it's, mm -hmm. you know, heads up among the trees anyway, and it's just like... Yeah, that too. Know, it'd be very difficult to hear it. Mm-hmm. Um, looking to see if I missed... Oh, yeah. yeah, We're going to throw that out there real quick. Um, yeah, folks, remember that we are now an actual affiliate with, with uh, Scallywag Tactical. Uh, if you'll use that link there, the link's in the chat, uh, you, you'll click on that link and use the discount code DARoberts10. You'll get 10% off your entire order. And uh, I have a couple of goodie boxes from Scallywag Tactical that I got that I wanna, I'm going to wait here in a bit and unbox them on the air. Haven't uh, taken them out yet, so I've got a couple of brand new Scallywag blades I'm going to show here in a minute. Oof. David Bai's got a good point. He says most people are blind and deaf in the woods. They're either looking at their feet, watching their step, or they're at their faces in a cell phone. That's true. It's a very good point. I mean, bears, too. I mean... Bears are the kind that you could pass right by. You're not even going to know they're there unless they want you to know. You yeah. know, so... I mean, most animals are very good at camouflaging themselves. Oh, especially hunting. You know, predators are very good at being quiet and stealthy and being right there. You don't know they're there until they want you to know. Uh, Mondoc40 and Research says, I was coyote hunting. My coat was desert camo Gore-Tex. I spewed mm -hmm. a muley doe because blended in too well. Uh, must, it must have moved. Yeah, you probably just moved just enough for it to see you, and then it took off. That's a good oh, idea. That's cool. Three beards. Heck yeah. That's a very good idea. That. I may have to do that now. <laughs> So what do you That's think? A good idea, Let's look at the missing four. Yeah, it's a good idea. Let's look at the missing four one one cases. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and again, just specifically the ones where they disappeared under those specific weird circumstances, like where dog tracking dogs won't track. I'm not talking about the ones where you know they they found remains in the woods years later and stuff like that. Just the ones where no sign was ever found. Like Dennis what do you Martin. Think, yeah, like the Dennis Martin case. Um, I would think that in, in areas like national parks, that would just be mm -hmm. like a h private hunting preserve for something that big. Um, I mean, those be, things, yeah. could, if they wanted to take out a, a, a full grown buffalo, but they seem to, you know, Genosco in particular, seem to have a predilection for people. Uh, and we've mm -hmm. got hikers and even, even park rangers go missing in national parks. 
Yeah, that's true. And if you look at that Dennis Martin case too, the other family actually did say they saw something in her carrying mm -hmm. something away. So carrying, was that thing kiddo. carrying a boy? Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's a, that's a very good a good point. I mean, you know, it, I think the quote unquote authorities completely just dismissed their account because it didn't match up with you know with their theories. But uh, you know, how many times have 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 you heard stuff like that where you know right. somebody reports a Bigfoot in the area? Uh, and, and well, that whole just, case was more. Yeah, that whole case was messed mm -hmm. up. D. I mean, why was it that the military was only searching at night? You know, what was it they were looking for? Where they would only conduct those searches. They knew more than they were and saying. Why did they, yeah, and they kept the father out of the loop. It seems like they shunned him and didn't let him know anything. Why was that? Yeah, right. it seems pretty suspicious. Yeah, and like in the uh, the the case of LBL, and I know this is Dogman, not Janosqua, um, but when once it was reported, uh, special forces elements out of out of Fort Campbell, Kentucky, were brought in. That doesn't mm. happen on missing people cases. No. no, I mean, you, you get a no. kid lost in the woods. You don't have special forces teams showing up looking for this kid. Um, and it, we, I mean, in some of these cases, these abductions, right. special forces units did come in. Why? They're not part of search and rescue. That's not their mm -hmm. part of their mission parameter. Right. Special forces don't yeah, get called like, in. They're not even really supposed to be operating on our soil. Right. I mean, like Dennis Martin kind of case. You know, you had the, the theory FBI that there are the groups military. out there that hunt them. Mm -hmm. Could be. Could be that they know something. You know, they know what's out there and they know how to handle them. Exactly. And John Doe, they said um, in for Patty the family said the Dennis Martin case. Were, so. Uh, Patty B says the Dennis Martin case was extra heartbreaking. Yeah. That dad never forgave himself. And I, I think that, that they should have at least taken him to the side and said, look, you can never publicly say this, but this is what happened to your kid. You know, give, give some people closure. Yeah. Uh, I, and again, I, I, I've said this before. I think this is why the government will never just admit they knew about cryptids, because that makes them culpable in a lot of disappearances. Something that's uh, not really well known, you know, the government actually covered up the existence of owls at one time. And the reason why they did that yeah. is because they were because reproducing the owls industry. to a certain area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, is it that they don't? want people to know or that we don't hunt them down i think it's because they don't want us going out there and kill things off i don't think it's any really super deadly motive here it's because you know they know they're out there and they're like well we can't have you guys killing them off so we're gonna lie about them for now i i think it's more of a if people went out hunting them a lot more people would go missing mm -hmm. it could be a protection thing too you know they could be going hey you I mean, can't deal with these things, so yeah if you want if your average hunter went out there with a deer rifle like a 223 mm -hmm. that we normally take down a deer to a mm -hmm. Genosco. I don't think it's going to anything more than piss it off. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I would want to run. Into like a, one, like one so. of us getting stuck with a thorn. It's not going to kill you. Yeah, it's going to hurt, but you know. <laughs> uh, Reebird says, could this be something that is a result of a Montauk type experiment and that's why special forces were involved? I don't think it's so much that it was a part of an experiment. I think that the government knows about these things and just doesn't admit it. And when certain criteria are met, they know that means that they're getting particularly aggressive in an area and they'll go in and call it. That's in my thing. Yeah. I mean, you have to. Well, mm -hmm. that would almost make a good book if you really sat down and wrote something like that, wouldn't it? <laughs> what if I know anybody, anybody that writes books like that? Oh. Yeah, some weirdo, I'm sure. Uh, oh no, I'm getting lag from you comments. guys on my end now. You know, man. Oh. I, we, we, then clearly we're getting we're getting somebody's attention if we're all getting lag because I've got I've got gigabit internet. There's there's no way I should be lagging. Yeah, you were just kind of chopped up on my end. Oh no, we made somebody angry. Get a little too close to something, are we? Oh well, I guess uh, I guess we'll just mm -hmm. uh, have to see what happens. Yeah, you know, there, just yeah. for the for the record, I don't. The yeah, FBI just for the record, I don't plan on disappearing. Oh, oh man, these guys. Here go. Permission to just vanish. Yeah. So, 
Fish guys. John Doe says, do you imagine the results of five million rednecks going <laughs> into the woods shooting it? Anything looks vaguely suspicious? Yeah, they'd be shooting each other. Oh, boy. Oh, my beer. <laughs> uh, Eric Sab says, I heard the special forces team they sent in to, to uh, Dennis Martin were a cleanup crew for the creature. Oh. Huh. It would make sense. They would they would go in and try to you know make sure it didn't do it again. Um, we hear stories like that time and time again about mm -hmm. you know aggressive Sasquatch. There was a story from North Carolina where a local sheriff was having trouble with uh, creatures that were you know killing people that lived out on the edge of town, and uh, it ended up getting a Navy SEAL team come in mm -hmm. and, and take out the the clan of Bigfoot that were doing it. And I think that's when we start seeing Gugway and Genosqua pushing into an area. Um, yeah, you know, the, the, because the, like you were saying, the Patterson and Gremlin just aren't normally that aggressive. No, nope. I mean, I've heard that Denfoot will just you know evacuate when Genosqua and Gugwe show up. So you know they got to be pretty bad. Well, you, would you blame them? Yeah, well, you, you've only got to look at the natural world. No, we not we one already know of to see stuff like that happen. Look what happens in uh, South Africa and Hans Bay. When killer whales show up, the great white shark population leaves, and you always think of true. Most people think of great white as being the end all be all in the ocean until the killer whales show up. Then they, mm -hmm. oh, you know, look at that. That's that I kind of, I mean, the orca touched on briefly last night. I touched on briefly when we were with the with, with blondes and booze last night. Um, when great whites are in an area and orcas come in, mm -hmm. the, the orcas will attack and kill the great white, but the only thing they eat is the liver. Liver. Yep. Yep. Look how many how many times yep. you've heard that with big. That's the most creatures. nutrient says. They will take, they will take the they will take mm -hmm. the uh, the liver and other other organs and leave the meat. I, I think I that's very, well. The soft very tissue and organs is where the most nutrients provide. You, you yeah. just have to look at the natural world that we already have observed to see that stuff like this happens. So, I mean, oh, yeah. this is far-fetched. And mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's yep. outside the realm of possibility to realize that we might be finding proof of these things probably within the next 10 years. I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility at all because mm -hmm. well, one, you've got more people that have better camera equipment. Cameras are getting uh, you know better every year. Um, even the camera on my cell phone is way mm -hmm. better than anything I ever owned before. Um, so, you know, I think, the, and there's so many people that are shooting films of everything. I think it's just a matter of time till we catch some really good footage. Uh, and yeah. I'm not talking blob squatches and, and red circle photos. I'm talking something's going to get legit. I think it's going to happen. Uh, oh, William Bedard says DA has DA. some more on his <laughs> Thanks for the super chat, man. You're absolutely correct. My brakes are good, and I, you know, I'm I'm not not planning anything crazy. I'm not running my car off the road. Uh. <laughs> I apologize, folks. I am trying to keep up with the chats, but uh, I keep uh, missing stuff. For some reason on the the chat overlay on the side, it cuts off like the last little bit of it. I can't yeah. even see. I can't see the whole chat, and I'm not sure why. I don't know why Restream is doing yeah, that. Yeah, it's doing it on my end. I don't know what the heck is wrong. It's doing it on my end too, today. so I have no idea. Yeah, it's it's clearly that could something. That's where the technical problems are coming from. It could be Restream. Mm -hmm. Are they doing updates? It would not shock. Maybe it's updates. What's that? Yeah, it may be doing. Maybe an it's update, all updates that they're doing. Suck. Mm hmm. Uh, Eric Sob says, "Have you any of you heard anything?" about feral humans and a cryptid called the Polov. I have heard about feral humans. Mm, the Polov's new to me, but I, I've heard... I, yeah, I hear a lot of. Like uh, the Appalachians and even uh, what they refer I to think as those, the night uh, people. Yeah. What's that? Mm -hmm. Probably lost. You, Ryan, we lost The pale crawlers, the cave dwellers. I think those... Mm -hmm. oh, did you lose me again? Uh-oh. Oh, okay, the problem. I think are feral humans too. Yeah, and uh, the night people that they see down the oh, swamps of Louisiana. And there's another question. Yep. 
option. <laughs> Duke says, and I'll be right there to say, ha ha, told you so when it gets proved. Uh, she said, Ashley says, uh, I can see him be the result of yeah, rabies, yeah. and that's why the government gets involved to stop a potential spread. That's an interesting thought. I Could mean, be. I hadn't really considered that's that a... before. Yeah. I mean, you would think that if, yeah, if a, uh, thought, a Bigfoot yeah. creature is that genetically close to a human, that they could get a lot of the same diseases we get. So I would say them getting, you know, even COVID wouldn't be mm -hmm. outside the, outside the realm of possibility. Well, that's the thing about rabies, though, is like to be even it. Any kind of animal can get it. So hydrophobia mm -hmm. is very dangerous. <laughs> I remember one time when I was a kid, when we growing up, you can on imagine the farm, that. Uh, mm -hmm. What's that? Imagine that a dog you say, man, man with rabies. Oh, well, that's a terrible. Oh, my God! I, I remember once as a kid. Hold on, I think I just unplugged my microphone. My head, oh my headphones. You guys still hear me? Yep. I guess you could hear me, but I unplugged my right headset. So yep. give me just a second. So going back to our what we were just talking about, what Ashley was asking is basically mm -hmm. she thinks on, I can't find the, the this is a, jack some type of government experiment where they know they're that they're out there and if something happens in there uh things get too close to being proven or whatever is that is that what she's saying when she thinks it. they're coming back or the government sending their team in at that point to cover it up or clean it up whatever you want no, to call it no no what she was asking is if no she was asking if maybe like these, these things had rabies they're infected with rabies and that's why they stepping in to avoid the spread so maybe i mean it, it's it's a possible theory but then again we do have to look, look at something though i mean the two you know way way back you know, 1400s 1500s so be going on mm -hmm. that long with that population dying out i don't think so you know i think it yeah you know, if it were rabies it's all gone so I think it, the, the more likely idea, yeah. <laughs> or the more likely solution would be um, that the government sends in these teams when populations get too aggressive. Yeah, that's what I think, too. When they get too smart, they come too close to civilization. That's when, mm -hmm. when the government goes, OK, send in the boys. Exactly. Um, I mean, look at the uh, the National Park mm -hmm. Service. Um we, I, I know it's a kind of a rabbit hole I've jumped down to, down to, down before, but uh, the Bauman incident, uh, one of the earliest earliest uh -oh. references we have to a Sasquatch killing somebody, uh, the level of detail that Teddy Roosevelt recorded in that incident leads me to leads, makes me believe that Teddy Roosevelt was actually Bauman. He was the one that survived the attack, but he had political aspirations and he didn't want to come come forward and say I saw a monster out in the woods. So I think Teddy Roosevelt was actually Bauman. And if you accept right. that as, as a likely possibility, flash forward to Teddy Roosevelt as president, what's one of the first things he does? He creates the National Park Service and cordons off millions upon millions of acres that we still have limited access to. Areas which specifically large numbers mm -hmm. of people That's go true. missing in. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with you. I thought that, you know, they were one in the same for a very long time. I agree with you. Well, I think so, too. Has anybody ever uh, mm -hmm. made a map of all these missing 411s and overlaid it with known sightings and seen how? There is. Let me see if I can find it. Um, there is I, a map. I think. Uh, I think you're going to yeah, find it interesting. It's a cool map. Uh, yeah, the Kachog, cool right? No, 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 the no. Cool let, me, let me show you. I'll show you the one. I, I know I can find it. Hmm. Just give me a second. Okay, here we go. I got it. Give me a second to get it saved and, and uh, uploaded. <laughs> Come on, my computer's being stupid. 
everybody's computer is being stupid tonight. Mine is being really, really bizarre. And I'm not certain why. Hmm. Come on now. Well, hopefully this will work, but I don't think it will. I think it's the wrong format. Uh-oh. It's not working for you. Yeah, give me a second. It's Something's being stupid. <laughs> Any other night, this would have worked just fine. But tonight, of course. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Eric Sab okay, yeah. asked a question. Has anyone ever heard of a special forces unit called 4E? I have not. Hmm. Yeah. Not 4E I. specifically. I haven't either. Okay, check this out, guys. This is a map of the missing 411 cases, guys. The top map is the missing 411 clusters where the majority of people have gone missing. The map beneath it is the map of known cave systems in the United States. Wow. Huh. Pretty close matchup. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. That uh that right there by Very the trail is is pretty t pretty uh, telling uh, as far as I can tell. That those super clusters and cl you know, large mm. clusters of missing people correspond almost exactly to large cave systems. Hmm. Oh. Well, thank you, William. That's awesome. Thank you, William. I appreciate that, brother. Um. Wow. <laughs> that's a challenge. Yeah, that's an awesome challenge. Thank you, William. Um, now, initially, like you were saying, that the uh, the 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 Genosco were was an Iroquois I Iroquois. Uh, which actually, we get the name Genosco from the from the Iroquois, uh, and that was a northern tribe. Yeah. Um, but now mm -hmm. we're still like uh, like you were saying that uh, that Duke had a sighting uh, near um, mm -hmm. in in Minnesota. Uh, how much farther south are these things coming? Mm -hmm. I mean, have we have we got any? Any new sightings in, in, in the southern parts of the United States? I mean, that would be the telling thing. Yeah, I think that they're, has, they're no longer afraid yeah, I think of he has one in Louisiana. Yeah, I think Duke has a sighting from Louisiana, too, of a Genoa squad. So, I mean, if they're in Louisiana now, it's like, whoa. <laughs> You're getting close to where you are, DA. You might want to be careful. Oh, I'm always armed when I go out, believe me. Yeah, well, you might want to become like Robocop or something pretty soon if those things get too close to you. Oh, believe me, I'll be armed to the teeth. Hang on, I'm uh, trying to. Oh, hey, Dahlia, look at that. Well, thank you. You are awesome. Oh. Thank you, Pink Dahlia. Thank you. Thank She's you. She's one of the mods. That's awesome. Um, thank you so much. Um, so it, it, we, now, if that's a Genosco sighting from Louisiana, and mm -hmm. we've got Gugway sightings that you know, Gugway sightings as far south as East Texas and southeastern Oklahoma, that could explain mm -hmm. why we're seeing a lot more military involvement. And that, that's really the the reasoning I put in behind my Wild Hunt series. Uh, that there was a growing cryptid threat, and that's why the team was founded. But I think you know we're we're seeing you know actually that's less less science fiction than I originally thought it was going to be. When or you know less fiction, it was not necessarily science fiction, but you know less horror stories and less fiction than than I originally thought when I started writing a book series. 
you know, what what do you, what do you mm-hmm. call a book series that's that's quote unquote fiction but hits that close to reality? I, I don't even know if I could call it based on reality. Well, we call it reality I mean, just, now. It hits very close. Go it. What's that? What was that? We call it the truth now. <laughs> he said you call it reality now. Yeah, current. Put it in the current events section. <laughs> um. Mm-hmm. You, you could always do that. I mean, um. Now I know for I know for example I've had several stories that I've that have come to come to me of military type groups getting involved. Uh, the LBL incident, supposedly the mm-hmm. military got involved. There's that story out of North Carolina. There's right. a story down from down in East Texas uh, where some campers went missing and a, mm-hmm. and a military team showed up to help with the search, which doesn't happen. Um, you know, the military does not get involved in in, in searches for missing people. Uh, it just it's no, not, not their purview. Really. I mean, we've got search and rescue and law enforcement for that. You don't see even National Guard will rarely get involved. Once in a while, if a, if a sheriff's department is overwhelmed, they can get assistance from the National Guard. But active duty does not send teams in to look for these. So the, to, to me, these are the ones that are telling us where these hot spots are. And a lot of those, mm-hmm. a lot of those hot spots are corresponding to where a lot of people have gone missing. Yeah, yeah, it's very. True. And there's some of these missing stories are coming from urban areas now. I mean, what better what better thing place for uh, for uh, a Gugway or a uh, Genosco clan to start hunting would be at the fringes of big cities where homeless people won't get reported missing. That's yeah, that's a very good point. That's a very very You've good. You've got a point, large yeah. missing and undocumented population that live in in or around the edges of big cities. That would be prime hunting. Mm-hmm. I mean, they would, would they yeah. would they would learn pretty quickly that hey, nobody's coming to look for these people. Yeah. Big says DA read Creepers like, chat comment. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, there we go. It's down uh, a little bit. Creepers, there you go, yep. Creeper scripted in Paranormal Corner says, DA, did you see the thermal pics I got of something looking out behind a tree? A couple of people said it may have been a rake. Uh, no, I haven't seen, seen them, dude. You know, shoot them over to me. I'd love to take a look at them. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie, thank you very much. Overbuilt Automotive, thank you very much. You guys are awesome. You guys are gonna you guys are gonna break poor William. <laughs> um, uh, David, David Denton. <laughs> he's like, oh crap! But William, I won't hold you to it, brother. Thank you so much for doing it. Um, uh, Daryl Denton says the clusters of missing not only line up with the caves. The the the, the caves. The missed issue is the numerous hundreds of ley lines that cross each other in some of the same areas. I, another thing that uh, oh. I looked up one time, and I, I've, I've got to find the map somewhere. But uh, not only do the uh, a lot of those clusters line up with the, with large cave systems, but they also line up with fault lines. Oh, whoa! And I'm hmm. not sure what relevance that has, but it's still you know. Of course, you get a lot of caves near fault lines, but you know mm-hmm. those would be yeah. if you've got where tectonic plates aren't quite touching, you've got the potential for caves going deep. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, definitely do. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, that's the common one. I did a Halloween show go. called LBL: The Rest of the Story, where we share the eyewitness testimony of the first responder to the LBL massacre. His description of the critter says Gugway. Dude, I've got to go back and watch that. I did not catch that. I am going to definitely that's go back. What I've been saying for a very long time. Hey Ryan, I sent you a, a Facebook message. If you can send me mm-hmm. Duke's email email address, I'll send him the link. Yeah. If you can just send it to me in Facebook I'm Messenger. To get my frozen. As soon as it opens up, I will. Yeah. Okay. Um. Let me, let me see here. Sorry, I got sidetracked. I was reading a couple of. I, I've got to check out that that episode. That is going to be freaking awesome. Uh, I know Jody Cook, the uh, founder of the North American Dogman Project, had a chance to interview one of the Highway Patrolmen that responded to the to the. Uh, actually, I think he interviewed both of the Highway Patrolmen that responded to the original LBL incident, and his interview with them is pretty telling. It is, you know, they definitely got, that entire incident got covered up completely. Hmm. 
Hmm. Okay. Did I walk up? Still not getting this open up for some reason. No, you're. Hmm. You're actually getting choppy on my end now, too, for some reason. I don't know why. We're, we're, our internet signal must be really bad. And we generally don't have a problem. I mean, I just did a, a speed test before I came on the air, and I was getting, you know, like 900 up and <laughs> and 950 mm. down. So That's weird. It's weird that we'd suddenly be acting up. Well, do you want to try uh, to... I've got another super chat from William Bedard. Thank you, man. Hmm. Holy crap. I, I don't think I've ever seen this many Super Chats on a single show. You guys are awesome. Yeah, what's going on? Thank you, you Renee. <laughs> <laughs> I, dude, I've never seen this happen before. We, we get the occasional Super Chat. We'll get two or three, but this this is insane. We, we've never gotten this many before. This is awesome. Thank you guys so much. Oh, nice, Lene. Awesome, dude. Lene, Miss Lene, yeah, you're Lene's awesome. awesome. She sure is. Yeah. Um. Especially. So do you think that it would be possible for Genosqua and Gugway to interbreed, or are they just enemies? I don't see why they couldn't. I mean, as long as the chromosomes match up, why couldn't they? And that if would they be did, a terrifying I, match. Yeah, it would. A match in hell. Yeah, Absolutely. And wouldn't they, though? I mean, if they ran across one another and they're essentially the same or close to being the same, I don't see why they wouldn't interbreed. Right. Um, yeah, and with both of them being hyper-aggressive anyway, good mm -hmm. God. I mean, there might be that battle for dominance, and, you know, to mm -hmm. the victor go the spoils. Yeah. So, I mean, I yeah. can see clans of either one raiding the other for resources. Yep. Yeah, I could too. Oh. Here's another question. Do you think they would mm -hmm. think they're cannibals? Do you think they oh, eat I, their yeah. own? Yeah, definitely. I definitely don't see them having any problem picking off their own kind. Say one's wounded or I mean it's an easy meal. Mm -hmm. You know, if one's wounded oh, yeah. or old, you know, take it out. It's an easy meal. You're guaranteed to have your caloric intake, your fat, whatever. So I don't see why they Northwoods, Northwoods with his ex, ex comment. Wouldn't be a show without a comment about Northwoods' ex. Yep. <laughs> well, Ashley, thank you so much. You are awesome. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Overbuilt says PC RAM issues or it's laptop. I'm not on my laptop anymore. I've got a I've got 32 gigs of RAM. I should not be having RAM issues. <laughs> yeah, I maxed the RAM out on this beast because I was having problems with with a lot of stuff loading. So I uh, yeah I, I decided to heck with that and went all the way. Um, I, I I think with me my internet just sucks. I get my internet through Cox and they they are aptly named. Cox, because they're a bunch of you know what. Mm. That's funny. <laughs> uh, Nerd Babble says, "You guys need to come to Northern Ontario, Canada. The wooded areas we have here. So many places for Sasquatch and others to hide." Dude, I would love to. I would. Oh, I, I'd as be Car down. As, it, yeah, as Doc says, I'd be down like four flat tires. I would love to come up there and, and do some <laughs> oh, squatching. God. Of course, uh, you know you can't really bring your own firearms with you. you know, laws being what they are, but maybe if I, uh, you know, hook up with somebody that already lived there, you know, know what I'm saying, we might be able to to uh, go uh, not unarmed, because I would not want to go unarmed. I'd be all for that, man. Going to Canada to do some squat watching. Yes, sign me up, please. Creepers Cryptid sent me some some pictures over. Uh, looking at the, these are what something from a thermal. Let me uh, get those downloaded and see if I can get them sent over. Sent a video. I'm not sure I can get the video down though. Yeah, let's see mm. if I can download the video. I cannot download video. Download the video from from Facebook though. <laughs> Thank you, William. You are awesome, dude. Goodness. 
Yeah, right, let me uh, try that to... money, DA. <laughs> hey, well, YouTube's going to take a big chunk of it. Oh, yeah. Let me uh, <laughs> yeah. get those pictures loaded. Uh, John Kershaw, who's from Australia, Creeper, Creeper's Cryptid and Paranormal, uh, he sent these over to me oh, on yeah. Messenger. Uh, said he called me on Thermal. I cannot get the, va uh, the video to download from Facebook. Uh, of course, unfortunately, the low battery right in place. But I think what we're looking at is this dark figure in the foreground. Uh, you can see it better there. And whatever it is, is definitely, you know, radiating heat. You can see the big, big dark spot in the middle. Uh, that is that's something big back there radiating heat. As to what it is, you know, it's hard to say. I mean, you know, with thermal, you never really, oh, not that. <laughs> you can't ever really tell with thermal, but God knows. That, that's a good catch on thermal. Whatever it is that you've mm. got back there is big. Hmm. Uh -oh. Nerd babble. I'm down. Just let me win. We'll be out, out there. Yeah, I was trying to click on nerd babble and lost it. Um, let's see. As I hunt, hunt my friends, firearms are available. Take you guys out to an old logging town where my dad grew up. Lots of fun. Oh, dude, we, uh, we've got to make that happen. I'm not sure my wife would want to go. She mm -hmm. hates cold weather, but I would love to go do that. That would be freaking well, awesome. The only problem is, uh, huh. I'm terrified. Of running, so Check I'll this have out. To, like, he said yeah, the thermal was fully charged when we started to record there. it. Creepers hmm, ripped it. Uh, okay. He was saying the, the thermal was fully charged when we started to record it. Dude, I had that happen at a cemetery. Mm -hmm. I, I put new batteries in my, my uh, electronic uh, voice recorder so, so I could record EVPs, and I took it out of the bag, and it was dead as a hammer. And I, I just put brand new batteries in it before I go out and went out there. It's weird how that happens in some places, and not just paranormal, but even with cryptid investigations. People have inexplicably that you know, phones will go dead or other things like that. Yeah, we had some weird stuff going on out there with yep. our electronics. Interesting. Hey, what's up, BMR? You got Bigfoot Michigan Rob in the house. Hey, Rob. What's up, brother? I thought uh, we'd take a quick second and, and do the unbox the first one. You guys ready for this? Drum roll, please. These. The box will go. Oh, it's tapes. No wonder. There we go. Oh, cool. These are throwing knives. Still wrapped in plastic. Yeah, these are badass. Got a little Ooh. protective cover on the tip. I like. It comes with a set oh, of three. See. These are on sale on Scally nice. Scallywag Tactical right now. I, I, I think, let me look. I'll tell you how much they are. Uh, but the, right now they are dirt cheap. I am um, mm. part of the affiliate program. They gave me a gift certificate, and that's how I got these. But uh, that's awesome. the, uh, the throwing knives, I like. which are probably going to become part of my inventory. <laughs> uh, let me find them real quick. Oh, they're on here. There we go. They're on sale for $18 right now for three knives. That's like almost half off. They're regularly $35. That's if awesome. If you use, the, use our link and that discount code DA Roberts 10 you'll get 10% off of that. So that would make it, what, $16.20? And these are pretty mm -hmm. good quality throwing knives. I can't wait to go play with these in the backyard instead of a target. These are really nice. Mm-hmm. Those are cool. Always like a good throwing knife, and they get a really good nylon sheet with them too. Set oh, three. nice! So, and it, sixteen bucks if you lose one, you're like, let yeah. me go ahead and do the other one. Sure, why not? Yeah, I'll go ahead and knock the other one out. So before, because if I don't, I'll forget it. Um, this one is called the Transformer. Oh, you got it. It uh. 
comes in a nylon sheath. Most of their knives come in Kydex sheaths, but this one comes in a, comes in a uh, in a nylon sheath for some reason. But uh, it, it's a pretty wicked oh, looking knife all by itself. And I'll show you why they call it the transformer. Down here on the end, where like the release for a lock blade would be, has a release, mm -hmm. and it locks over into a punch dagger. No. Whoa. Oh, that's awesome. And it is freaking sharp as hell too. Yeah, don't get yeah, They call it the transformer because it locked it. Yeah, you can and hit the same button, it locks right back into a fixed blade knife. And the that handle of it is cool. really super comfortable. That's awesome. That's going to be one of my new EDC knives. That one's going to go on my belt every day. There you go. So recent badassery from uh, Scallywag Tech. So, That's Craig, cool. if you're watching, cool. thank you, brother, for the knives. You guys make incredible blades. Um, if you want to get yours, all you got to do is follow this link. Go over to the uh, to scallywagtactical.com and use the discount code DARoberts10 for 10% 10 10 off your entire order. Very cool. So really good quality blades, too. Yeah, I'm pretty, up? Fr pretty freaking stoked about this Transformer. I'm like that, like geeking out over it. Hit the hit the little lever there and folds right over into it locks in place too. Well, it's rock solid. Folds into a punch dagger. That's cool. If you got an you need an EDC knife, you're gonna have to defend yourself with this. Would probably be the one. And it's really not that expensive. Uh, the Transformer is on sale right now. Let me find it again. Where is it at? No, it's on here. You find it real fast. Sorry. There it is. It's on sale twenty two dollars. That's regularly bad. thirty regular thirty five. It's on sale right now for twenty two. So if you uh if you use the discount code, you get another ten percent off of that. So it would be two dollars and twenty cents off, so it'd make it about nineteen eighty. That's a good deal. Yeah, they make some great blades. I've got a, I've got a bunch of their knives, and I love them. Just fantastic knives. Cool. Well, I wouldn't want to try to use something like that on a Genosqua, but it'd be better than being unarmed. No. I'd rather see you try to use it than I try to use it. Yeah, yeah if you're going to go in an area where you think there might be Genosqua, definitely go with somebody you can outrun. Oh, yeah. That's the first rule to run fast. You just have to run fast than your friends. <laughs> or, or pull uh, the Shane from The Walking Dead and just kneecap him as you run off. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> buddy! <laughs> I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that twice. I'm kidding. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> awesome. See, passes, I'm going with DA. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that wouldn't take much to outrun me. I'm a little out of shape these days. Hey, I'm in shape. Round is a shape. <laughs> yep. No. <laughs> well, anyway, back to back to our, our Genosqua and and and, uh, and 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 Sasquatch talk. Um, what do you think brought them south? What do you think brought them this? I think south? it's just because they real. There's more food. I think, you know, they realized hanging out in the woods of Canada, they weren't getting all the human meat they wanted. And they realized, hey, the humans are play. And they follow the smell. Realized, oh, there's more as you go down this way. There's a lot more humans. We run into them more often. They, you know, they realize that there's more humans in, the, in our states. <laughs> Martin, you just punch it and groin with a push dagger. Yeah, I will, that would guarantee to get its attention. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be a bad day right yep. there. Oh, well, it's gonna be great, yeah. Yeah, I, I would say that would definitely be a fact. Um, mm -hmm. with them, with them, they were generally adapted for colder climbs. I wonder how they're, you know, they're adapting so quickly to southern climates where it's hotter. Well, I don't think it's easy for them. I mean, I don't think it's a you know a sudden change. I think it's a gradual adaptation for them 
I don't think it's easy. I think it's something they struggle with for a while. And that could be kill as often is because, you know, the heat kind of levers their breathing mm-hmm. and everything so they don't hunt as often. So I don't think it's an easy change for them. I really don't. And, uh, you know, when they're coming farther south, they're coming farther south, they're, they're certainly encountering more uh, more people. But the, wouldn't that also put them in mm-hmm. more danger? I mean, I think with them, they think they're top of the food chain. You know, they're so big and bad and mm-hmm. strong that they kind of realize he can't really outdo us very easily. You know, they're easy pickings for us. So what do I fear if they're not in large numbers? Right. Well, I, I'm sure I, the larger I, the crowd, like we're saying with the, or they, they kind of. Yeah. Well, I think what we were t- talking earlier about how Native Americans, you know, were basically hunt, trying to hunt them to extinction when they first started getting good yep. firearms, I think, you know, years and mm-hmm. years and years of nobody paying any attention to them, their populations have gotten much bigger. And I think that's why a lot of the sightings, oh, yeah. not just in Geno Squad, but I think cryptids in general, I think they're not only their populations have increased, as, you, know, you know, people are seeing them more often. I also think to a large extent, they're losing their fear of us. I mean, you know, yeah. oh, definitely. You know how many people they actually hunt are. anymore? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're, not, we're not That's a, a hunter, hunter-gatherer society anymore. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, also, you got to remember, they're also, you know, they see us running away from them, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, Creeper Scripted says, we went back to the area. I had my first dog man encounter yesterday and haven't been back since it charged me and was howling at me. Yeah, I, I would probably stay clear of that area for a while, too, if it charged me. Um, was that the only? I'm trying to keep up with comments, but uh, Helen A, she says, I'd rather use a grenade launcher on a Geno squad. I don't blame you. I'm sure that now. It's a little grenade launcher. Oh, man. Uh, Creeper Script says, I'll put a video together tonight. I can't oh. use most of the footage. Really strange police operation was taking place, and they didn't even worry about us being there. It was very odd. Makes you wonder why the police were in that area. Oh. Very strange. Pink Dolly, this is jetpacks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, it makes you wonder why... Uh, you know, there are far more areas like a, a lot of national parks, uh, areas that people were previously allowed to go into now have chains across the trails and signs up saying these are are this area is closed, uh, you know, mm-hmm. for wildlife management. But it makes you wonder what kind of wildlife they're trying to manage. Brian, I'm losing you, brother. You got really pixelated true. there for a minute. Very true. Going out into the states too, though, game trails. Mm-hmm. You know, because predators always follow the same game trails as they. So you know, who's to say right. there's not certain pathways that they followed with the, heat. and those you know those certain game trails just lead them down to the states now. It's not entirely right. possible. Mm-hmm. You know, they might have come south following some of the game herds. Um, mm-hmm. I was going to say some. Oh yeah. Uh, something we've thrown well, we've thrown around before about about uh, game cams. Uh, why you know, it's it, you so rarely get anything cryptid related on a game camera. Uh, I've I've often speculated that they could see see the infrared beam of the camera light. Um, I know people oh, that have reported having those infrared sensors with motion lights, and when they were having activity near their house, then they would go out you know, sometime during the day and at the edge of where mm-hmm. the the motion sensor could catch, they'd find sticks shoved into the ground and stuff like that. Uh, I think that, wow. that, that when we know uh, some animals, including deer react to the infrared light. So I don't think it's outside the realm mm-hmm. of possibility mm-hmm. that they can see the infrared light and avoid those cameras. Oh yeah. I would totally think they could. I'd be surprised if they couldn't. William, wow. thank you, sir. That is awesome. Thank you, sir. Uh, Creeper Scripted says all of our national parks are clo- what, what happened? Uh, Creep- God dang it. Wrong one. Uh, Creeper Scripted says all our national parks are closed at the moment, DA. We've been in and found structures. Then the next day that area is closed. Well, I think the government's keeping an eye on it. 
Oh. <laughs> Well, Bigfoot's yeah. a helpful tip. Most creatures know, maybe hate being set on fire. Thing that yeah. That's why I want. That's why I want to get a, <laughs> a dragon's breath rounds from my shotgun. Oh, get a board. Uh, Ashley Hilt says other wildlife have been known to destroy game cameras. Bears will tear game cameras up. I've seen that happen lots of times. That's true. Yeah. Because they can. Um. Actually, taste something that's in the plastic, though. There's something casing that actually smells. Them. Wonder how you would uh, eliminate that scent from game cameras. Wonder if it can be done. Hmm. I don't think you could in the casing. I think I think it would just crack the casing and everything. So you because it's petroleum. So what if you it's took within a... the pl plastic itself? Yeah. So what if you took a game camera apart? And you can order game mm -hmm. cameras that don't use IR beams. That okay. you can, and that, that's the kind I want to get. What if you take the game camera right. apart? You take the plastic casing off and put it inside a wood one. Hmm. That could. You yeah, think that I would, think that would, would work make any kind of an difference. Extent. But especially if you make it out of rough hewn wood that still has bark Go. on it. Uh. I think it, I think it's a great idea. I mean. Mm -hmm. you know, worst worst thing that okay, happens, yeah, you still I can get see that. Sure. You know, it's easy to get rough hewn mm -hmm. wood if you go to any sawmill. We may have to do an experiment. Probably twenty within driving distance of here, and you can get that get that rough hewn. Well, you know, Robbie's got some mm -hmm. right there, but get some that have been been shaved off the outside of the log before they made lumber out of it. There you go. And cut that up and make a box out of it. You still <laughs> got the bark on it. Okay, you yeah. Put it in the fork of a tree, and it would mostly blend in. Yeah, uh, George Jennings says bacon I may have to soda try that removes now. the smell. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna I'm gonna get a get a get one of the game cameras that doesn't use IR, and I'll build a box for it. I mean, I've got enough tools out in the garage I could build it. Mm -hmm. I think it's worth a shot, and it, you know, I'll, I'll post my results. I mean, if I get better mm -hmm. better results with it, then you know we will uh, we'll definitely be doing more of it. Uh, I think it, one it, one it's good for natural camouflage. It doesn't smell like plastic. Oh. And you can make it look like it's supposed to be there. Oh, definitely wear gloves. You uh, you don't want to don't want to leave your scent on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because your smell, yeah, your scent will be on there. So mm -hmm. it's worth a shot. Yeah, it's a good yeah, idea, though. Good idea. Not that idea. I think it's worth a try. Well, Robbie, you're the woodworker guy. You think you could build it? Uh, yeah. We're all thinking now. <laughs> Okay. Well, and Rob, you, know, you can look behind Robbie. He's yeah. he's the woodworking dude. Hmm. Um, the, you know, he would. This thing right here could, you know, we could actually cut out the uh, the channels and cut out everything to put a piece of plexiglass over the top of it mm -hmm. to for the lens Ooh. and everything. Yeah, I, keep that, it dry. Yeah, and then seal the inside of the box with like like beeswax. Yep. Instead of something okay. that smells chemically. Mm -hmm. Johnny Half says maybe cedar might Ooh. be good for scent. Got a good point, but at the same time, you want to use this use the same type of tree material from the area you're going to be. If cedar's not normal in that area, it's going to stand out. You don't want anything. However, cedar would keep bugs right. away. Yeah, you don't. I mean, around here in Missouri, we're predominantly mm -hmm. oak, walnut, Wait, ash. I got a ton yeah. of ash right behind the camera over there. Yeah, so any any of the big hardwoods Ooh, we've got okay. here in Missouri, and I think those would be the best to make it out of. Now, if we lived in a largely coniferous area, you know, cedar yeah. or pine would be perfect. Uh, I think you know, I think you'd have to build the box to suit the area you're going to leave mm -hmm. the trail camp. But one, I think it will eliminate that plastic smell, the the petroleum smell. Uh, two, it's going to make it blend into its surroundings, and mm -hmm. then just get some. You know, get some pine net, pine netting or whatever, pine needles, and help to you know pack around it. Leaves, leaf litter, uh, or yep. even some of those um, those those camouflage pieces that you can cut off in cloth shapes uh, and put it around it to just basically you know camouflage the shape. It would, I think that would be a great way to do you know great way to do that, but it would not hmm. stick out like like a sore thumb like a lot of these do. And I, I think it would really rely on using a camera that's not IR. David Bice says use hedge, it'll last forever. Oh, that's a good idea. 
Well, I, I think it'd be worth doing it. You know, yeah. build a couple of them and uh, True. like Robbie, for example, put one out in that active area. You guys do your research. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I could take one down to the Joe Bald area and hide it really, really good. Um, might be interesting to find out what we got on camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I could make, make one out of ash for you, VA, and mm -hmm. then I got plenty of pine I could make for one up here and we could run it, run two separate experiments and see how they do. Yeah, George Jennings says pine sap makes a good strong glue. Do it. Yeah, we could use we could use pine resin to seal it, or or even beeswax, press it into the cracks to seal it so the camera stays dry. Mm-hmm. I think this, I think we're on to something. And you know, this is something this is something I like about about this conversation. You know, we're all three we all three do research in our own particular areas, but we're sharing the idea. Uh, the, mm -hmm. Too much of this happens in, in the in the uh, in the cryptid community. People are so guarded about little ideas. I'll share everything that I know. I'm happy to share everything I know. Yeah. Um, and I, and there are way too many people that are really guarded about the way they do things. Um, I think that's a bad a bad way to do it. I think um, I think by doing that, you're really kind of, you know, what's the for old sprays cutting your nose off to spite your face. Uh, you're missing out on mm -hmm. you know, on just this idea is like we're throwing around right here. Well, uh, you know, we we're coming up with something entirely new and, uh, you know, we did it without anybody's ego take, trying to take credit for it. This is just something we came up with right here. And I think it would be a great idea. I think it would really work. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think it would too. Yeah. See, I can't stop looking around. At things getting in ideas, ain't you Robbie? Yeah. <laughs> Christine Murphy says, why do you think Roosevelt immediately created government grounds as soon as he got in office? I say because he has an encounter. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about that just a little bit ago. Yeah. I, I firmly believe Roosevelt is Bauman from the Bauman incident because the Bauman incident was first Agreed. recorded in Teddy Roosevelt's book, The Wilderness Hunter. You can still buy that book. I mean, you can go on Amazon buy a copy of it even now. And, but if you, it's I, a great I've, read. I've interviewed... It is a good read. I've inter interviewed dozens of people that were backwoods people that I'm related to. I'm I'm one generation out of the hills, folks. I'm a I'm a Ozarks hillbilly, and I've interviewed some of these old hillbillies. <laughs> and the level of detail Roosevelt talks about in that book, you don't get out of old hillbillies. You just don't. That's true. They wouldn't have described the type of woods they were in or how they set their trap. Or using the bacon grease, so they wouldn't give you those are details you don't get from the story. They would well, just and, assume you knew those details and move right on. And we've talked about that before too. Yeah, you and I have both interviewed countless number of, numbers of people in our profession, and you just you have to drag details out of people. You don't get mm -hmm. that level of detail just by sitting and talking to somebody, unless you've just spent hours and hours with them, just dragging everything out of them. But if you knew it and you were writing it as that account, that's your, you know, it's just like if you if you wrote a statement for yourself, but then you wrote a statement based on or you handed somebody else a sheet of paper and said, here, write down my story. You're going to get two different versions of the right. same story. Exactly. Mark Napier's got a good point. He says beeswax may make some critters try to break into it looking for honey. Yeah, beeswax might attract uh, yeah. bears. So we might want to stick to pine pitch. Mm. It's a very good point. Yeah, that is a good mm. point. I think he brings up a very good point. I think pine pitch to seal it's probably the best. Pine tar. Yeah. Yep. So this will be something that you would want it to be sealed when you're out there and you would just crack it open when you bring it back to check it. Right. Yeah. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even like uh, re uh, open it in the field. I would go out, collect it, take it home, take it apart. Look at the, look at it to see if it leaked in any places where you need to improve the design. <laughs> Duke's got a good point. He said, yeah, but Bauman wasn't a hillbilly. He was a mountain man, and they'll talk your ear off if they hardly ever get to talk to someone. But I, I agree. They'll <laughs> tell you tall tales all day long, but, but the level oh, of yeah. detail in the story, to me, just makes me think, think that Bauman was Roosevelt. Um, mm -hmm. There are details that most people wouldn't think that. to tell in a story. Yeah, I feel that it's still that they're one and the same. I agree. That's something I've thought for a while. 
Yeah, I've been mm-hmm. I've been I've been talking about my Roosevelt theory and then with the with the National Parks conspiracy. I've been talking about that for a couple of years now, and I uh I really believe that Bauman was one and the same with Teddy Roosevelt. I think he still had aspirations of politics and didn't want to come forward and say, I saw a monster in the woods because people think he was nuts and he wouldn't have got elected. Yeah. True. Even back great, then when it was. Good point. You know. Because Teddy Roosevelt was a, was a well-known outdoorsman, hunted everything you could fe- feasibly yeah. hunt on North America. So he was a, a tremendous oh, yeah. outdoorsman. He in so the, yeah, the, so the thought of him going out there and running trap lines in the wilderness is not not a not a leap of the imagination. It's not something that he wouldn't have done. It's very much something he would have done. Oh yeah, he would have been all for that. He would have been all about it. You're like, oh, this is a place the natives say don't go. Well, hell yeah, we're going. He was a he was a <laughs> well the dude got shot while deli- while giving a speech, an election mm-hmm. speech. The dude got shot. The bullet went through his folded up speech in his pocket and penetrated into his skin like three inches. The dude finished the speech before going to the hospital. The dude's a he badass. Was, he was a man, that's for sure. You know, love or, love or hate the guy's politics. I don't care about his politics. When it comes to being when it comes to being a tough badass, he was a tough guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, he downgraded himself. He was secretary of the Navy and stepped down to lead the Rough Riders. I mean, yep. the dude the dude had sand. We'll, we'll put it that way. Oh, yeah. He was a very yeah. tough dude. That's for damn sure. Oh, yeah. Yep. Hey, we got over 100 likes on the channel. Thank you, guys. 100 likes on the video. That is awesome. Thank you guys so much. Uh, make sure you nice. like and share and subscribe to the channel. Uh, Ryan, uh, tell, them, tell them where they can find your show. Okay, well, you can find us on YouTube under Monster Radio. We're actually going to start loading every Sunday once again. We just we drop a monkeys episode on a Wednesday just because we missed you guys. But we'll regularly upload on a Sunday. So I'm glad look you over mentioned new, the Devil Monkeys. Here. I'm oh, glad you I, mentioned I, you the Devil Monkeys. That's why I mentioned it. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. I'm so glad you brought that up. Uh, Ryan is the first person I ever heard to have that, that brought this theory forward. And I, I fixated on it, and it's been running through my brain, my head for, well, yeah, I think you first mentioned it on Facebook about a month ago, maybe a month yeah. and a half. Yep. And yep. ever since then, it's just been swirling in the back of my head. And he he came up with the idea, and I'm definitely giving credit where credit is due here. He, he, he postulated the idea that these sightings of devil monkeys – that are being seen all across the United States might be packs of juvenile gugway. And it makes yep. so much sense. Um, you know, where would, where would clans of baboons running around North America come from? Uh, baboons just aren't indigenous here. And they're, they're existing in places that baboons wouldn't normally exist. Baboons are, are, you know, from more equatorial zones. They wouldn't, they wouldn't fare too well in North American winters. Yet these things are in places that have bad winters. Right. Northern California, for example, there's been a lot of sightings of devil monkeys in Northern California. I believe William Nighthawk pointed yep. out some that were, I believe, in North Carolina. Devil monkeys. Mm-hmm. And devil in North Carolina in the mountains can get some nasty winters. You, want, you start asking oh, yeah. yourself, where did these things come from? Them being like juvenile clans of, of Gugway makes exact perfect sense. I think yeah. I think Robbie froze up. Yeah, that's on what this. I was thinking. I mean Yeah. I mean actually they behave like Gugwe do. You know, and really the only difference between right. a Gugwe and a devil monkey is what? The height. The size. Size. You know, so the size. If they're so similar they act like Gugway, maybe they really are the juveniles. Mm-hmm. Yep, they look like them too essentially. They look like them. So Yeah. Um uh, Duke says, um, devil monkey pictures from Arkansas tomorrow on my show. Dude, I am going to tune in for that. Duke, what do you think about the thing? I'm going to be there, Duke. The devil monkeys. I, I, will, I will be there if at all possible. Robbie locked up. He'll be back oh, yeah. in a minute. I'm... Okay. Oh, yeah, so folks, make sure you uh, swing by Monster Radio on YouTube and give them a like, share, and subscribe. Show them folks some love. And, uh, you know, and hit that. And make sure you hit that like and share button as well. Get their get their channel out there in front of people that you know like this kind of con, kind of content. Because 
you guys come up with some some awesome shows over there. I mean, you really dig deep in some of these subjects. I mean, like you and I, you and I have been talking for a few weeks about doing this Genosqua show. Um, other than I think Matt Squatch presents. I don't I don't think anybody else has really done much on the mm-hmm. Genosqua. I mean, there's not a lot out yeah, there. No, I mean, when Duke, I went digging. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, other and than I Duke, think it's I a fascinating open subject. That. It's, yeah. it, it's really a super is a great channel. Subject. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, Matt Squatch is a great He's channel. Don't get me wrong. But if you guys want to go over to Matt Squatch Presents, that's a good channel to be be a part of. To like like and subscribe to his channel. He's got a lot of great content. But his Genosqua video is what twelve minutes long. I think there's a lot more to there to talk about than just twelve minutes. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's my friend Matt though. Matt Squatch and I go way way back. He was the first guy I told my dog man encounter to. You should uh, uh, reach out to him for me. I'd love to get him on the show. I don't have contact. Oh, absolutely. I would love to get him on the okay, show. Okay, I'll send you his. Okay, his, I'll send you his, his channel is one of the, one of the first ones that I found on YouTube. Mm-hmm. As I, well, you know, I didn't do, really do much as far as you know, like uh, looking for Bigfoot stuff on YouTube until I don't know, ten, maybe seven or eight years ago, maybe ten. Yeah. I think Robbie made it back. Yep, he's a great, great guy. I'll there he is. Yeah, I would I'll love definitely to have send Matt on the show. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll do it. With the wind says Devil Monkey Theory is solid, yet they seem to be hostile towards each other as they age. I've only seen Gugway and mm-hmm. Paris as adults. Yeah, see, so that's a, a, another Gugway less clan like. Yeah, they tend to drift apart. Gugway party, less you know. clan like. Yeah, they tend to be more solo. What they a, tend to drift off, off their family gets older. So, kind of like grizzlies, they only get so, together I mean, during yeah. mating season. Yeah, so I mean, you know, if they're there as babies, it only makes sense that when they get older, you know, they drift apart. Then when they meet each other again, they're violent. So there you go. That well, adds more weight to that theory. With the juveniles kind of banding together until they get bigger, big enough to defend themselves, mm-hmm. especially from things like yep. Genosqua or other Gugway. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. I'm telling you, that theory was really a good theory. Well, there's a lot yeah, of we, a lot of animals do that. You know, look at crocodiles and alligators; they do that. Mm-hmm. It happens a lot in the animal kingdom, but it, and it's only in certain species of higher primates that they stick together uh, in in clan groups or family groups. Prime uh, chimps do it, gorillas do it, you know, both lowland and, and mountain gorilla. Um, but then you've Mad got birds. other species of of of, uh, of 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 monkeys and apes that don't. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, orangutans. They don't generally stick around in big groups. You'll see them in small groups, but you don't see huge groups of of, uh, of orangutans together like you will gorillas. Um, mm-hmm. Monkeys like uh, rhesus monkeys. They don't they don't tend to stick around in groups, and when they do, they fight. They're pretty aggressive toward each other. Yeah. Uh, Blue Crossroad. Blue Crossroad says, oh, uh, Mark Newby says, Bluff Gugway, you know, like other Bigfoot, you saw two, there's six behind you. <laughs> uh, Blue Crossroad says, I uh, figured I'd check out this channel. My bud Cameron suggested I look into it. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for stopping by. Hope you uh, hit that like and subscribe button and stick around. Become part of the DAX Machination. Uh, we had Cam on the other mm-hmm. night. Cam's a great guy. As yep. far as the book projects that Cam and I are working on, look for a lot more coming in the near future. Uh, Cam and <laughs> I have got a lot of plans together. Awesome. Uh, there we go. Um, uh, Shane over at West Coast Dogman says, My good friend Miriam sent me an interesting video from Donovan Dredd about Gugway out here in California in the Sequoia National. Hey, dude, if you, uh, if you don't mind, forward that my direction. I'd like to watch that. Um, do you remember that, uh, that, uh, that show, uh, Mountain Men? Yep. yep. Not, not, not Mountain Mysteries, not the ones about the Bigfoot hunters. I mean, the well, one that was on, on like, uh, like History Channel or Discovery Channel where they followed different mountain men surviving out in the woods. Do you remember mm-hmm. the one trapper in Alaska who kept finding his traps torn up? Marty Mar- Mariano, yeah. or Mariano or something. Yeah, he yeah. kept he would find traps that were just like ripped apart, like randomly. Whoa. They never, Interesting. They never, 
He would That's say, yeah, I got another playing. broken one, and then the cameras would pan away. They wouldn't go into it. I don't know. I think there was something out there big tearing up his traps. Because those are steel. I mean, he had big traps. He would find traps that were snapped, not you know, not not just had been you know, been set off. He was finding busted traps. Mm-hmm. But I don't know why they didn't dig mm. into that. I don't know why they didn't explore that. Would have been great for ratings if they had something like a big cryptid in his area, because he was he was so far out in the African bush, you could only get there by float plane. Yeah. <clears throat> he was even the Alaskan, not Africa, <coughs> the Alaskan, the Alaskan bushland. Yeah, he had he, he had a a plane that he flew, and usually by the time he he landed, big storms would hit, and he was out there for weeks at a time. Months. Yeah. Oh. Mm. I've always wondered what was hitting his traps. It wasn't like every trap, but he would find random traps that were busted. Uh, Christine Murphy says, Creatures are bred and let loose in our woods. I hear some agents involved are trying to shut these programs down because they're getting out of control. I, I think when, a lot of people talk about like dogman or, or certain species of Bigfoot that have been weaponized. I don't think they were created in a lab. I, I really don't. Uh, because the sightings go back way beyond we had any uh, ability to, to genetically modify anything or grow anything in a lab. Uh, some of these sightings go back, like Ryan was saying, you know, the 1500s, the 1400s. Um, the, yeah. Viking, the Viking settlement at Vinland. Uh, they talked about the scralings, huge hairy beasts that were that basically drove them off. Um, so mm -hmm. the, these sightings go way back, long before we had the genetic ability, the ability to manipulate genetics. But I, I, yep. do, I would definitely say our government is not above experimenting on them to see if they can weaponize them. Uh, Big yep. K, has I'd a agree. Question. Let me see if I can find. Let me That's see if question. I can find the question. If you see the question, let me know. I'm looking. Mm. There it How is. How far down was uh, Yeah, it was a little bit up. Uh, oh. Big K says, here's a question. If y'all could buy property in any area of the U.S., where would you buy it in the hopes of to do Bigfoot studies? That's a good question. Whoa. Ryan, what about you? I'm going with the Northern Rockies. Go first? Northern Rockies. Northern, Northern Rockies, Rockies is where I would go. There's, yep, there's so, so many Bigfoot sightings up that way. Robbie, what about you, brother? What about you? Mm, Oregon, Washington State, that that area. That seems to be the like the. I won't call it the I, grandfather of the of the, but the you know just that northwestern area that all the, I I love the way that forest looks out there. Anyway, I would just love mm -hmm. to be out be out there and. If if I could buy land anywhere and and and. Do set up a, res a permanent research setup. Uh, I would probably buy get some land near the Snell Grove area where Monster Quest got all that activity. That's another good one. Mm -hmm. yeah, Doug Hycheck and I talked about that at, for a couple hours one day on the phone, and he said, "Yeah, there was a lot of stuff that happened that we didn't put on the air because we didn't catch it on camera." He said, um, "He at one point him and his son were out in a in a boat and they heard something that sounded like it was singing coming from the woods." And uh, I, him and I were talking about it. He goes, I've never heard anything like it. He said it was almost like words, but it wasn't. And he said it, it was it was high-pitched and melodic, but he, he never heard anything like it. So I asked him, I said, have you ever heard of culning? He goes, no, what's that? I said, it's the herding call that, Vi that Viking women would use to call their cattle back because they would roam through the mountains. And I sent him a YouTube link to it. He listened to it. He goes, you know, that is almost exactly what we heard coming out of the woods. Yo, that's creepy. Yeah. And it's not a language. It's just oh. a series of tones. Mm. I need to get Doug back on the show. Yep. I really need to get Doug back on the show. Doug is awesome. He's a great mm. guest. Uh, Big K show says... Uh, because I know there's cameras that use satellite signals you can buy that's sort of like the next level of trail cams that would be good for that type of thing. It makes sense. That would be great. There's some that are that'll link to your cell phone uh, that have their own cell signal, uh, and these are these are fairly high end. You know, I can't afford them. You know, they're expensive. Uh, you know, book sales only go so far, folks. 
you know, you know, well, I'm not, I'm not exactly JK Rowling or Stephen King. We'll put it that way. Uh, yeah, if I was, yeah, I wouldn't be a problem. But they have some of these new generations of of, of uh, cameras that you buy a a cellular chip for, just like your phone, and you put it in it, and it links to your phone, and it will send trail cam footage footage to you from miles away. That would be the ones I would mm. want to get, and then you know, do like Robbie and I, like yeah. all three of us were talking about, build one of those wooden boxes for it. That would work. Billy Tink says J.K. Roberts. <laughs> if, uh, uh, all, 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 uh, that, that's hilarious, but if J.K. Rowling woke up tomorrow with my book sales, she'd jump out a window. <laughs> and if you woke up tomorrow with hers... I, yeah, I would have a heart attack, and my wife would be quite felt wealthy. Yeah, but you wouldn't have a reputation, no. though. No, no, definitely not. And that's why I leave politics one hundred percent out of my books and out of my shows. I, I everybody's got a political opinion, and uh, and the quickest way to make half your pop your, your potential readers hate you is go off on a political rant. And there are authors that do it, and I refuse yep. to. Yep. I won't, won't touch it either. I'm like, nope. Martin politics and religion. Read Watchers nope. by Dean Koontz. I have read that. It's a good book. Yeah, yeah, I, guess I don't do politics, and I try okay. to avoid religion as much as possible, because I have my own particular religious views, and you know, I know that might that some people might not like that, some people would, um, but it's religion and yeah. politics are the two things that canonize people, will galvanize people either for you or against you, and I just don't want to take that kind of stand because I'm uh, I'm not I'm not in a position in my writing career where where I can afford to piss off half my readers. Right. Uh, John Doe says, uh, D, I can go into details while I think this, but my personal opinion that the only possibly directly created cryptid, cryptid might be the Chupacabra. I agree. I, they, they, uh, might, they have shown there might be a possible link to the Puerto Rican Chupacabra to a U.S. Uh, military installation on, uh, on a, uh, Puerto Rico, in on one of the Puerto Rican islands that one of the first sightings of the Chupacabra came from right outside of it. Yep. And I don't know if it's something they created or Correct. something they captured. Uh, I think it's possible that Chupacabra might be alien in origin. We'll be talking because about right the Chupacabra there in Puerto over Rico a was one of those big now. observatories. What's that? What was that, Ryan? Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking What'd about the Chupacabra on Monster Radio. That, that'd be a good one. Oh, we're going to be talking about the Chupacabra on Monster Radio. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a, a very huge difference oh, you between got, the, the quote-unquote chupacabra they see in Texas and the one they see in Puerto Rico. And supposedly mm -hmm. they won the, the one they oh, see yeah. in South America looks more like the one from Puerto Rico. Well, mm -hmm. there's like, yeah. I mean, if you look up chupacabra on, online, I mean, there's like 500 different ways that people describe it the mm -hmm. way it looks. Yeah. I mean, it's just like Everything from a small dog to it looks almost like a little two-legged gremlin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, with the wind says, honestly, the creepiest area I've investigated out of dozens, the upper Missouri River Valley, North Dakota, the Arkansas, Ozarks, New and New Mexico Central Mountains were the top three, three creepiest research areas. Yeah, I've been in some creepy places here in the Ozarks. There's been a couple places, and like I said, my mother used to say that I would blunder in where angels feared to tread. And I've gone into a couple places armed and went, you know what? I don't think it's worth it. Let's get the hell out of here. Mm -hmm. You ever had that happen to you, Ryan? You get into an area and just every nerve, nerve on the back, the hair on the back of your oh. neck stands on end, and every nerve in your body's like, you do not need to be here. I've had that happen to me a couple of times. Oh, yeah. It's terrifying. Yes. Woods go dead quiet. It can be. And you it just can, have you this want, feeling like if I stick around, yeah, I'm not You leaving. want to run, but you don't want Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all you, you want can do to, to run out of there, casually you know, back to the vehicle. Back. Yeah. yeah. Running from a predator is a mm -hmm. bad idea. Yep. But I've I've had that where I just, I you know, you that every warning is screaming in your head. Oh, the worst. And you want to just turn and break for the vehicle as fast as you can go. Well. The uh, last time we went up to mm -hmm. our little hot spot, 
we walked out and you know after we set the trail cams up which I, you knew we went up there and set the trail cams up da but i don't know if i even told you this part but uh me and norman terry were all sitting out there talking after we walked back out of the trucks and where that area is there's a little parking area and there's one of those red gates the big wood or metal bars that they put across so you can't drive any further than a certain spot mm-hmm. usually once you get past that gate everything mm-hmm. kind of stops you know you don't want nothing really follows you well that was the day we thought we heard a smaller one moving around up around us when we got back out past that gate we're standing out there talking to the trucks Ooh. and about 60 yards away and up the hill all of a sudden it, something slipped and almost fell down the hill and you could tell it was on two feet and Ooh. we all just kind of stopped talking real quick and looked and it was like and it, it, everything just went dead quiet again we we stopped and listened for about Ooh. 15 or 20 Ooh. minutes and then we heard something back over the other side of the gate so what we thought or what we were thinking happened was the smaller mm-hmm. one that we thought we had seen and seen the footprints for had followed us out and went a little too far and almost fell down that, oh. that embankment down almost down to where we were at. And then the other one was making some noise on the other side to kind of distract us while the while it got back up and moved its way back around to where it was supposed to be. It was kind of one of that's cool though. <laughs> moments. Yeah. Yeah. That's creepy, but it's still kind of cool, though. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. I had a buddy who was telling me one time he was out in the Mark Twain National Forest, and uh, they, they said they weren't really mm-hmm. looking for cryptids or anything. They were just out looking for good places to hunt, and they were walking down a game trail, and uh, he was talking to his buddies, and they were really, weren't really paying attention. He said, but all of a sudden, out of the woods, he heard something whiz past the front of his face, just like zzzz like sizzled past him, almost hit him in the nose. And a uh, a walnut still in the green shell struck a tree just a few feet away and exploded. He said something threw a walnut at him with a hell of a lot of force, and he never saw where it came from. Wow. He said if if he'd have took another step, if he hadn't slowed down to talk, it would have got him right in the grape. He came within half a step of getting that in the side Hmm. of the head. That would probably would have hurt. Yeah, it would have hurt like mm. a bastard. We used to throw walnuts at each yeah, other all the time when, when we were kids. But, you know, we never, no one ever sizzled, sizzled one in with that kind of force. He said it was like a like a professional athlete, a professional baseball player, professional pitcher threw a, threw a fastball past him. He said it just zipped by him. Hmm. Hey, Tomb, thank you for uh, sponsoring, uh, posting that in the chat. Tombstone just passed the, passed the, <laughs> Tombstone just posted the link to y'all's channel. So, folks, <laughs> make sure you go over there and like, share, and subscribe. Oh. Hopefully, you guys will pick up a few oh, subscriptions. Bro, Tom. Yeah, uh, he's a great guy, man. And Tom Stone's one of the best. Oh, yeah, he's awesome. He's one of my mods, and him and I... We send each other goofy memes all mm-hmm. the time. We got to comparing rednecks in the United States and uh, in uh, in Australia today. So I, I learned something. Apparently, rednecks oh. in Australia are called bogans. <laughs> yeah, <he's... laughs> that's a new word. Yeah, I said I, I said I need that on a t-shirt. I'm a bogan. I'm just I'm just a hillbilly. So kind of fits. There you go. Well, folks, we are after the that's two-hour awesome. mark. <laughs> Um, we, we've passed the two hour mark Alrighty. and, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I've got to get some writing done tonight. So we'll start wrapping things up, but Ryan, I want to thank you brother for coming on. We've had a great conversation tonight and I, I think we've really kind of only scratched the surface hey. of the Genoa square. I think there's a lot more to talk about. Um, but you know, yeah, we've got, we've got so much, there's so much more again. here. Yeah. We'll definitely do it again. You know, we should do a, like a Genosca mm-hmm. Gugway update, uh, in a month or two, just do like an update to this show and add more information okay. because I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to go into more of your theory about yes. uh, Gugway, about devil monkeys being Gugway. Uh, and I'll talk to uh, 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 William Nighthawk about that okay. too, because I know he's really interested in the devil monkeys. 
Um, but you know, we've we've yeah, he had, had some awesome conversation tonight. Uh, with the wind had a, something there. It says, how we about had, how about discussing the urban wilderness interface plans? Dumpster divers are more prevalent than may, many may think. Many modern humans are not highly observant after midnight. Uh, some of the best dogman stories mm -hmm. I've heard were, to, were, were come from inside a city. Uh, there were three really good ones that came from St. Louis, inside the city limits of St. Louis, and a couple of good ones that I've heard that came from L.A., downtown, from mm -hmm. inside the town of L.A. Uh, apparently, they were using the L.A. River Basin to come in town. These were dogman stories in, in cities. So, yeah, it's happening. There was even a story of a small town in Oklahoma Ooh. that were literally being overrun with Bigfoot coming into their town and picking through their trash at night. Uh, I need to find the name of that town. Uh, it was on uh, an old episode of Bigfoot Outlaws, and they were talking about it. I want to find that episode again, and I want to go to that town. I really do. Uh, <laughs> there's a book question. Um, Barry Deezer says, DA is Heimdall dead. Uh, Heimdall's died twice now, actually. Uh, uh, Heimdall is a code name that we reuse in the books. Uh, I'm going to put an updated <laughs> list of uh, in this current book. Uh, there's only so many Norse characters that you can use names on. Valkyrie, Spider, Valkyrie Spotter is only always named Heimdall, and he's died twice. And uh, people have pointed out, like, hey, Heimdall died in the last mm -hmm. book. Yeah, we're using the code name. <laughs> uh, Christine Murphy says Manistee, Michigan is a hot spot. Yeah, I'd like to go up there and check that one out too. Uh, folks, if you've got sightings of your own you would like to share, or you would like to talk about you know, talk about your own experiences, shoot me an email at daroberts at daroberts.net. Uh, let me put that up on the screen. Uh, where's it at? Got to find it. Give me a second. No, I've got it. There we go. Uh, I'll change the banner. Uh, if you've got an encounter story of your own you'd like to share with us, you can contact me at daroberts at daroberts.net. Or if you'd prefer to send it through the mail, you can contact us directly uh, at P.O. Box 4614, Springfield, Missouri, 65808-4614. Um, you, you remain anonymous if you like. If you want, want us to read your encounter on the air and not, be, not have your name associated with it, that's fine. But, folks, this is a safe place for you to bring your encounter stories. Nobody here is going to mm -hmm. judge you on your encounter. We, you know, no, we, uh, just share your stories. Uh, we'd love to hear the stories, and this is a this is a place where you can tell it without any of us thinking you're crazy because we're right there with you. We, if we're, if you're crazy, then we're just as crazy <laughs> as you are. Um, Absolutely. So feel free to share your stories. And again, if you do want to be, remain anonymous, we're perfectly okay with that. Um, don't forget to swing by scallywagtactical.com. Use that link right there. Uh, Tomb, if you'll post the link in the chat one more time, I'd appreciate it. Use the uh, discount code DA Roberts 10 to get any of their blades on there. And a lot of them, actually, I think they've got a, a, fall, a winter sale going on. Pretty much everything in their inventory is on sale. Uh, and you can get some amazing knives. Some of the best pocket knives I've ever owned have come from Scallywag Tactical. Uh, just fantastic gear. It's why I use it in my books. And don't forget to use discount code DA Roberts 10 for 10% 10 off. Uh, also, don't forget, you know, I know Doc's not here tonight, but I'll go ahead and plug Dark Angel Medical. If you go to darkangelmedical.com and anything you order at Dark Angel, and Dark Angel Medical, any med kit, the EDC kits, I've got Mark Dark Angel kits and I never leave, leave the house without one. Carried one as a cop for almost 20 years. Go to darkangelmedical.com, use discount code CRYPTID25 for 25% off your entire order. Uh, folks, if you're going to go out camping, fishing, hunting, backpacking, cryptid hunting, be careful. There are things out there that can and will hurt you that aren't gu aren't Gugway or Genosqua. There's bears. There's mountain lions. There's snakes, uh, wolves, coyotes. There are all, you know, the greater North American meth head. There are things out there that can and will hurt you. Uh, be safe. Take take a medical kit. You know something. If you twist an ankle in the backwoods, you might be you might be you know animal chow before you can get out of there. Minor injuries mm. far away from basic basic medical services can be life threatening. Take a med kit and know how to use it. Take something to defend yourself. If you don't believe in carrying a firearm, carry bear spray. Carry carry a large walking stick. Carry a good knife. Carry a, a, a hatchet. Def take something you can you can protect yourself with, so you you have the right to come home safe. 
make a plan if you're going to be be someplace if you're going to be you know if you're going to be investigating someplace if you're going to be hunting or camping somewhere tell someone where you're going that isn't going with you tell them where you're going and when you're coming back that way if you're overdue somebody knows to come looking for you take take basic survival mm -hmm. survival gear Life straw will save your life. Life straw is this great little thing. You can buy them on Amazon for like, like 10 or 12 bucks. They're about this long, about yay, yay big around. They will filter as much as 100,000 gallons of water. You can put one directly into a lake and drink out of it. And it filters out the impurities and anything that will harm you. For that little investment, you can, you can have all the water you need to drink if you're out there and you get stuck. Um, what's throwsticks.com, Robbie? Check it out, and then uh, then you can tell some people about it. Okay, I'll, I'll check it out. Uh, That's why I put I'll, it in the private I'll, chat so you yeah. can look at it later. All right, I'll do that in the uh, the next show. Uh, but folks, just if you're going to go out there, and it doesn't matter what you're doing, you know, camping, fishing, hunting, backpacking, going to the range, uh, even just going out looking looking at looking walking along the river, any place you're going to go like that where you're away from basic nine one one, and you might not have phone signal. Take just the, the essentials to make sure you come out safe because we want to want you guys to go out and have a good time. We want you to come back safe. And remember, even if you're if you're going out in the woods looking for Bigfoot and you don't find anything, it's still a good day because you spend a day in the woods. Uh, some of the Absolutely. best days I've ever spent in my life were out among the wilderness. So just just bear that in mind, because some of the you know, you, you're, you don't look away from your cell phone for a while. Go out among nature. Look at some of the some, some of the things you can see. And it uh, it's a great way to refresh your soul. Um, it's yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic thing. A, a day spent in the woods, even if nothing happens, is still a good day in the woods. Um, so mm -hmm. just you know, bear all that in mind. Come back and see us. We're we're we're, we're proud to have you guys. Every, each and every one of you as part of the DAX Maca Nation. You guys are our family. We don't have we don't have fans. We have friends. Uh, that's why we this show is, set, is structured the way it is. It's set up just like we're all just sitting around talking. Ryan's a Ryan's a good friend of mine. Robbie's a good friend of mine. This was not uh, you know uh, three egos arguing over Bigfoot. This was three friends having a having a discussion about types of Sasquatch, and that's the way it should be. Uh, mm -hmm. there, remember, there are no ex, there are no experts in this field, and anybody that claims they are they are is trying to sell you something. You agree, Ryan? Yeah. Oh, one hundred percent. Anybody that claims to be an expert on Bigfoot is selling yep. you something. So just again, right. we just don't go know. out there. We have theories. Right. Yeah, we all we have is theory. And you're, mm -hmm. you the, any theories you guys have are just as valid and just as good as anything that we've come up with. So yeah, it, and, and all we have is theory at this point, and yep. one of these days somebody will bring it home and we'll have more more proof. But until then, we just share our theories. We share our ideas. And you know, Someone might hit it on the head. We don't know, but this this is how this is how this field needs to be. It needs to be without ego. It needs to be without competition, because we all really want the same thing. We want to learn more about these cryptids, and the best way to do that is to approach it the way we're approaching it right now. We're approaching it as friends. We're approaching it as family, and anything we learn, we're happy to share. Uh, and uh, and I'm I'm an open book, folks. If you've got questions yep. about cryptids, shoot me an email. I'm I'll tell you what I know, and if I you know if I don't know, I'll I'll point you in the direction of somebody that might. Uh, when it comes to Gugway and Janosko, uh, Janosko, Ryan's my go-to guy. <laughs> if I've got a question or I think of something, I'll shoot him a message. Like, hey, what about this? Uh, and you know th that's the way it needs to be. Uh, you yeah, know, there's yep. too much ego in this. Field. I encourage there's anybody. Too much that. infighting. Absolutely. And in fact, that's how you mm -hmm. and I got how you and I got to know each other. I think I I think I've sent you a message and asked you a question. Um, so, folks, yep. yeah, again, uh, Ryan, thank you for being here. Make sure you guys go by and like, share, and subscribe to their channel. If you hadn't had a chance to smash that like button for us, you know, punch that like that like button right right in the schnoz and uh, let that Facebook uh, uh, YouTube algorithm know that we need to get this this video out there as far as we can. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Hit that little bell icon so you get updates anytime we go live. And uh, look for a lot of new content coming in the near future. Uh, I know Ryan's got some amazing content over on their channel. Make sure you just check that out. Uh, I know Duke over at World Bigfoot Radio has got some fantastic channel uh, ch content. Make sure you guys go over and check them out. And you know, just because you like this channel doesn't mean you can't like the others. 
Okay. You know, there's you know, same thing with the books. Just because you read my books doesn't mean you can't read someone else's. Hey, I, we're, we're not in competition. This is not a competition. The only person I'm trying to be better than better than is the guy I was yesterday. Uh, so thank you guys so much. I appreciate each and every one of you guys for spending time with us. Uh, check us out on Wednesday night. I uh, haven't announced the topic yet because I'm kind of waiting to hear back on something. But uh, hope you guys will join us on this coming Wednesday night. And uh, make sure you guys tune in to World Bigfoot Radio. they got some awesome stuff about to come out. <laughs> Smack that like button like a fairy tale step <laughs> That's hilarious. Mark Napier says stab the stab the like button in the groin with a dagger. That's funny too. <laughs> and again, thank you folks for being a part of the DAX Maka Nation. We're, we're we're thrilled that you guys spent your Saturday evening with us and we hope you had a good time. So again, and another big shout out, thank you so much to everybody that, that sent in super chats tonight. That is so awesome. Thank you guys so much. Uh, thank you to my moderators who did an awesome job tonight, and thank you to everybody that's over on the, that supports on the Patreon page. Uh, you can check out my work on patreoncom author and you can help shape the future of the DA verse. A lot of stuff going on over there. So again, thank you guys. Thank you for each and every one of you. This is what we call an Ozarks good night when we say good night and then talk about something and say good night and talk about something. It happens all the time in the Ozarks. So welcome to <laughs> Hillbilly family. Thank you guys so much again. We'll see you guys on Wednesday night, and I hope you guys had a good time, and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Good night, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Night, Catch everyone. us again Wednesdays and Saturdays on DAX Machina. A special thanks to all our channel members and Patreon supporters. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe.